118 of the Battlecats podcast. I'm your host, Caleb Payne, joined by my co-host, Anacor. And, you know, what? Yeah. We're, we're, we're known to be the podcast that rambles, right? <laughs> Rev. Rev. We were discussing length of podcast. Length of yes. podcast. Um, ours in specific. Our, ours yeah. in particular. And obviously, you know, I've noticed that it's been getting a bit longer. Yeah. And you know what? I, Caleb, I'm not going to lie. I feel like... And a corker chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? Yeah, don't even lie. Because you can chat as well. Yeah. Okay, so, I, I, okay, so you, you, you be honest with me on this one, right? Uh, uh, I can chat, but it depends on the person. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. used to work at a university and I would have one-on-one meetings with all my staff members. I had like about 18. Right. So one on one every once every other week and then once a week with my like senior staff member. And so they sit in my room and it's like my office for 30 minutes. Right. And sometimes I don't have meetings booked right after. And some of these people I could chat with, like the people that I supervise for over an hour to over two hours sometimes. Right. (laughs) And there's other people that literally after the first five minutes, I'm like. (laughs) <laughs> what do we talk about for 25 minutes i'm just like dying right and i know it's always like that like and, and it's not just once right i'm supervising them for a full school year oh, so man, for the man. whole year i know every other week i'm dreading these meetings oh, I, I don't know man. how many of them are listening to this probably none right yeah. but i mean i think that i mean you know it was probably mutual right they probably didn't want to be there either yeah. I don't, like i was like i supervise them i talk to them all the time but like i just like we just didn't have any common ground. We didn't have because you don't talk about just work stuff, right? Obviously, I checked in with their yeah. work, right? I was checking about their personal life and stuff. And some people, I just struggled. So I think you it depends what? on I the think... top P person. Yeah. What about I you think... though? Because I'm curious about you. Well, I think I think this is the same thing, yeah. Because personally, like, if someone's, you know, if I'm not vibing with someone or something like that, yeah, then same, same in it, yeah. There's only so much small talk you can do, and I'm not even a fan of small talk anyway. Yeah, like I I'm, hate it. I'm trying to trying to be a bit more tolerant of it, yeah, because mm. you know, I understand it's valuable, but like, bro, sometimes small talk's a bit dead in it, yeah. But you know what? I will say, you mentioned in like, uh, you know, having to uh, mentor these people for a whole uh, term, yeah. Recently, I was working with one guy, and I already knew. Yeah, I was like, okay, I'm working with this guy like three to four times a week. Yeah, we're not really vibing. Uh, yeah not really but so i was like look i gotta be in the same room as this guy for all day yeah so i was just trying to like pick little things that maybe i can like relate to do you know what i mean in it yeah. <laughs> i think i think he had a dog yeah so i was like gassing about his dog um, it's stressful too because you're like thinking of stuff ahead of time right <laughs> yeah, you're like oh, what i want to talk about today like, oh yeah to like you're like the thing is is it's actually really impressive because you're you're way more invested in these people's lives than the people you could talk to because they're so literally could talk to you you're like think of everything like what do they do as a hobby right what do they like like what like if it's someone like i i could like chat with forever i'm not even thinking about these things right it'll just come up right yeah. but you're thinking like oh he's got a dog we can talk about that like maybe what where does he want to go for vacation right or where he grow up right maybe we could talk about that yeah well it's so true i'm not gonna lie i could literally give you a whole essay on this guy and, uh, and i don't want to see him again <laughs> it's actually i fully analyzed his like personality his like tendencies yeah i can even pinpoint his traumas that he probably doesn't even know he has yeah like <laughs> <laughs> bro, like his therapist. Yeah, bro. That's a job I can never do. As a, I was a oh, well, yeah. If you had a really a boring therapist. client, well, no, no. I mean, there's that, but there's also like therapists that like you're difficult. You dealing with difficult people, right? They're like yeah. psychotic or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Something I realized too, working in my previous job is just like the the people that need the most amount of help are the hardest people to help too. They're not like yeah, yeah, that's right? true. Because also more time in it, yeah. It's like you're not really gonna change unless you want to. And then if you don't want to, like, no one's going to be able to change you in it. So it's like, you know, you can only do so much. Exactly. Wait, anyway, okay, so anyway, this is a good yeah. example. Of... <laughs> well, we're, we're less than five minutes here, right? It was a little precursor, right? a little warm up, right? <laughs> All right, let's get to what we were saying before we start recording. Okay, okay. So two episodes ago, we had a three hour long show. Yeah. Yes. And again, like, I could chat for three hours. I know you can chat for three hours, yeah, but do you, man, want to be listening for three hours is the question. I feel like two is a sweet spot. I'm trying to put myself in your shoes, 
people of the audience. Yeah, I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. Yeah, because I used to listen to this podcast before I was here. And I'm Yo, like, you stop listening to it once you've been on. <laughs> hey, no, no. <laughs> God's uh, toughest. Maybe I got, I got the narcissism, man. I'm listening to every episode. But to be fair, like I'm listening to it while I'm like cooking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, this is the like, driving. Oh, I guess I could do that. Yeah. LA traffic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't drive, so. Let's, let's well, what about that. when you're like walking around catching Pokemon, like during Spotlight or Community Day, if you're by yourself? I throw on some podcasts for that too. Bro, the you know what? After last week, yeah, the assumption <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I do Spotlight Hour <laughs> or Community I Days on I my own I, I, is I, wild. That's <laughs> shocking to me. You all need to go back and listen to the last episode if you haven't, right? Oh, I don't man. understand how Anacor could walk so much and be so inefficient <laughs> at catching. Like, I actually. It's completely oh, baffling. Yeah. I I am shocked. I don't understand. Do you know there what? must I'm be like still... no spawns anywhere. I don't understand. Bro, I've got or you spawns have, for like, days. You must have like... the craziest drift or something. I don't understand. Wait, I'll, I'll show you my. You're in Japan uh, and London, so I I'm even more confused. Yeah. You had drift everywhere. Like what the heck? No, I don't drift. I just walk loads. Although this week, this week I was actually doing a lot of work at home, and so okay. I think I only hit like I didn't even hit fifty kilometers or something. Like that. Look, this I mean, I don't have kilometers a lot of times these days. Sorry. Wait, you have a ton of spawns at home too. What are you talking about? You want to see my home stop here? I'll show you mine. Ooh, great. Look at this. This is me. <laughs> I have two stops and I didn't catch anything. There's no spawn. <laughs> so I'm lucky there's. Yeah, that's it. Bro, I get my spawn on my daily spawn. That's I get two Pokeballs. That's why I'm always loaded with Pokeballs, right? Like, I yeah. never, never short on. Like, because you just stuff. got nothing to catch. Yeah. Like, ima- oh, imagine yeah. if I had a bunch of spawns at home. You know, it's crazy. So, you moved to LA. Do you know what? Do you know what? This, this I'll be honest. Yeah. Okay. So, since I think it was the psychic event, right? Um, I am currently like full with Meditide. Yeah. Because I want to do okay. some like Meditide mirror trades. Um, hey, why you and, still need a you, oh you're looking for like the the Manti slayer thing or whatever yeah 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 like i've got some uh you know some decent like candidates and stuff but i'm like you know what, i may as well because again and i, I like what you need for that again do you so so there's in my opinion there's two different like approaches to it okay so there's the approach that it's saxon and i think most people are taking where they want to hit the counter break point yeah, yeah. On either just normal rank one or best buddy rank one. Okay. But then also have as much defense as possible just right. to prevent an opposing meta champ from, uh, you know, getting that break. Okay. Personally, I don't want to go that route because obviously if you're putting like that much defense, you're sacrificing HP. Yeah. Which, you know, sometimes it's not too bad. I think the sacrifice is roughly around three, maybe four HP. Or like okay. like two to four HP on average is roughly how much you're sacrificing I to get see. that additional defense. But the only thing the additional defense is giving you is the slightly more assurance that your opponent is not going to get the break point. Yeah. But the thing is, but if everyone's I'm, running this meta champ slayer, then, then, then it then it's pointless. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So exactly. personally, I'm like, okay, well, I I want to hit the break point, yeah, yeah. But then I'll just take. Uh, either stat product or like you know as much defense as i need so i don't lose any break points yeah okay. but i'm not going to over invest in defense just to try and stop opponents from doing because they're going to be doing the same thing so then it's just going to be pointless yeah. you know? i'd much rather have the extra hp because it's probably going to be useful again is if they go- player thing that important so so i mean so i go yeah. to a lot of regionals for a commentary uh-huh. right and there's meta yeah. spawning everywhere so i could, i haven't really been hunting for it yeah, like looking i haven't been i have had transferred a bunch are eligible from psychic man because i just haven't been looking for it but i mean i could start keeping my eyes open for it right um, well do you know what interestingly enough and you know well i guess we'll be discussing this uh you know later in the episode but um you know the medicham dynamic punch medicham is i think at least from what i saw in curitiba it is and maybe even barcelona as well it's more popular than ice punch psychic now yeah yeah everyone's so on dynamic not, punch so why not just run the high stat product ice punch version oh because you still lose you still yeah lose so you want right? the dynamic yeah. punch and then you get the break point as well and that makes you less weak to opposing meta champs 
but yeah. then you know still you know gives you the ability to run dynamic punch dude I, i'm telling you man i've been on dynamic punch match uh, yeah, in san yeah. diego you know <laughs> and registeel this is back when registeel wasn't used as much but it was yeah. so good as a safe swap to grab shields off of men's gym everyone's yeah. using glitter stumpets back then uh, yeah. honestly i don't know why uh people were but then again it was like a uh, europe were using registeel and the u.s were yeah using yeah skin, u.s but... wasn't um, I, yeah, even had a, I even had I even posted on Twitter right after Fresno. I was like, "Yo, that Punch Medicham is the best Medicham move set." <laughs> right, I mean, you know, it's a few meta changes too, really so maybe, you know. But but I'm glad that people. But, you know what? Like, honestly, I think even then, in it, yeah, like uh, arguably, if if you because there, there wasn't really frost loss in the meta, and Azuma yeah. wasn't as common too, because it was. I just think if you had the uh, if you had the break point, then you could make more of an argument for it last meta because it's like yeah. you're not losing because that's what everyone was saying but you know what honestly i think this is a really interesting uh meta development that's kind of independent from move set updates because again that set was viable last season you showed it was viable last mm -hmm. season but it took people you know uh accent to win worlds with weird ivs uh you know a, a debuff to psychic for people to then be like oh let's try this in it and then also yeah. to see it on stage at like you know i'm assuming someone ran out of this but i can't remember yeah um for well, people to then be like let's all most of these wilds i feel like barcelona mm -hmm. that really yeah because yeah. there's are not a lot of people um, writing down and punch in pittsburgh okay like, so i guess it was mainly barcelona and then curitiba yeah. and again uh another example of that superior was everywhere in curitiba <laughs> It was putting in work. And remember how we were discussing this a couple episodes ago? I literally you know? thought Hoplock was trolling when I saw the Superior, oh. but man, that thing's kind of nasty. I faced it a couple Shit. times in GBL. I hate seeing that thing, especially against <laughs> Metashare. Like, it doesn't even resist the counter. <laughs> you know and I'm mean? just like, this is so bulky. I can't get oh, to it. Yeah, you know? Literally. Yeah. It's actually, yeah, man. And uh, yeah, I think Curitiba was a really good example of like, I think we, was, we were thinking maybe, you know, they were going to come out a bit spicy. Yeah. Based on like early, um, I mean, there was a Greninja top cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was also um, Paulinho Taji who <laughs> ran me <laughs> the chestnut. <Yeah. laughs> that guy, because so, yeah. honestly, anything you see this guy run, don't try at home because Bro, I guarantee it will not work the same way. Like whatever this guy's on, he's just like on another level. Like it's just, it's it's like when people bring something spicy, like oh, is this a meta shift? Heck no, right? It's just like it's just like this guy just pulled off something incredible that no one else can do, and like don't try to do it. It's not like you know, like Z's wise using Diamond Punch Medish, everyone else can use it, right? This is <laughs> Greninja is no. I, I mean, looking at it though, I was I remember looking at Greninja against the team I was planning on bring to Sacramento. I was like, wait, I was like, this thing's actually kind of strong. Like it beats Charizard, it beats Mana Buzz, it beats Alone Sand Slash. Like, Bro, you know, I'm not I gonna lie, things, like, yeah, like Greninja is such it's, an it's annoying tough. Pokemon. Yeah. Because it just hits so hard and it hits like And the typing's really good in this meta. Yeah. You resist ice, you resist dark, you resist ghost. Yeah, yeah you have meta you more about, but yeah, you probably just yeah. I, I don't actually... know. I didn't watch most of Curitiba, so I'm not sure how much He wasn't on stream. Uh, that's what oh, he was on stream at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. So we didn't see that's, any that's of his uh, That's yeah. why wait, how did he not show up on stream on day two? Uh, I think he was in day two losers, and then he got eliminated probably like the first round. Oh, like, they didn't. Yeah. They didn't nah, show it. They either. like left. I think the first two losers matches, and maybe like the second one as well. Ah, uh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. It was like a very short day two, but I think it was because they weren't even planning to do a day two in the beginning. Yeah, they were yeah, going to yeah. do it all in like, one day. All day one. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. that they did that because that would been a long day uh, for the players. Literally, literally. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So anyway, the <laughs> again, we got sidetracked. What yeah. we're going to ask people is, you let us know if... How do you even get yeah, to That was this a place? wild side. <laughs> how did we get here? We I talked about what we, what we talked about Pittsburgh, right? Uh, and, it or, was Medicham. Medicham. Uh, oh, because I have too many Medicham in my thingy, and that's why well, I'm you're showing me stuff. You're showing me spawns, yeah, too, yeah, 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 at your yeah. home. because I was saying, like, the reason... Well, I said, oh, because you can listen to the podcast while you walk around grinding. You said, yeah, 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 yeah. oh, my gosh. All right, what a freaking <laughs> rabbit hole we went down. I mean, a little precursor for later, <laughs> oh, too, for sure. But you let us know in the comments down below on YouTube. Do you, do you care about length, right? Is more better? Is more worse? Does it not matter? Or, like... You know, you got like me, you got time to kill in the week, you know, and 
might as well listen to a longer episode if the content's good. If we're just rambling about random stuff, then whatever, right? Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. Like then, it's just like we should cut out the fluff. But if we're actually talking about stuff that's relevant to you, let us know because because the thing I can't tell on our analytics for our podcast site is how long people listen to the retention rate. We just know how many listens there are, and our three hours our episode had more listens than our usual episodes. But again, maybe you clicked on it and you're just like, eh, I'm not into it and just dip out after the first five minutes, right? And that's actually something else I'm wondering is for our listeners, I, I guess this is not a good question because for our regular listeners, they probably just, they're like, yeah, I just a regular listener. But for the ones that just hop in and out, I'm just curious, what makes you listen to some episodes and others? Because like, we have like a roughly consistent like, listen, like fan base, but there's some episodes do better than others and I don't know why, right? Like, like, the Pittsburgh episode did better than others. I don't know why. Was it just, I came up with a better title. I don't even think the title was that good. I don't what know. was the title? We were just talking about the Ultra Unlock and, and the new meta. Was that something what the title like was? Yeah, something like that. But that had less listens than like the Worlds title, right? I feel like you want to talk, hear about Worlds. I don't know. Ooh, so I mean, obviously, our, our most uh, like highest listened episode was the Michael Saronka one. But that's that one makes sense, right? Yeah, Probably yeah, a lot yeah. Of new people were listening. coming for like... <laughs> they were coming yeah, yeah. for him. <laughs> Yeah, mm. uh, they were. They were. Mm. They helped trend on YouTube for sure. But um, mm. anyway, uh, so let us know. But mm. um, speaking of previous episodes, let's get into the questions we had from two episodes ago. Our our actual. Hold on. I am. I, I don't. I'm trying to. Okay, there we go. Uh, sorry, I'll try to. I'll try to type out. A colon sign. I couldn't type it out for some reason. All right. Anyway, um, so from two episodes ago, the it was called more quadruple stardust and a Gligar meta. That, I don't know. It doesn't seem like the best name. But yeah. But who knows? We have maybe, more maybe it's the Gligar meta. <laughs> maybe. Uh, Tristan says Caleb might have. So we're talking about like best we could do and stuff with championship points. Uh, Tristan said Caleb might have the luxury of locals, but it sounds like Anacor will probably go to more regionals and IC. So I think it balances out in a way. Definitely need to agree on bet turns before Sacramento. Where will Anacor be living for a higher percentage of the season? Maybe he should make this that his region. Uh oh, for for your championship hmm. points. For you. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I know I, if I, you I, had I, the choice, you would choose <laughs> you would choose APAC, right? Like it's like it's not let's not pretend like it's like, well, how long is he gonna live there for, right? If he's over APAC for over a month, hey. I think over one week ago, he's probably gonna count APAC. Like you know what? I'm spending the most amount of money in APAC, yeah. Sounds like a great way to rationalize it already. <laughs> Sounds like I'm putting down my roots, you know? <laughs> no, it's just that you're not living with family there, right? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Wow. Uh, oh, so so speaking of locals, so I actually went to my first local this past weekend. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, two days ago. Yeah, I did. How, uh, <laughs> uh, it was, it, they had some solid players there. I think we had enough for a five-round Swiss. So we did oh, five rounds of Swiss, and then we did single elimination playoffs. So. Based on whoever did like three, two or better, right? Be, 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 depending on tiebreakers. Uh, so I only went two and three, which personally I'm glad because my team was trash. And now I know I'm not bringing this trash team here. I'll show you the team because ain't no secret so now, right? I'm not bringing this team at all. Uh, wait, was this what you thought you was cooking? Like, oh, heck since yeah. The season? Uh, well, no, not since the beginning of the season. Since oh, okay, like, okay. since maybe Pittsburgh or, yeah. or Barcelona. I was just team building. I was like running through. I was like, oh, this would be good, right? So this is the team. I'll, I'll read it off to you all too. Shadow Lone Sand Slash, Mandibus, Shadow Charizard, Shadow Venusaur, Lickitung, and Metacham. And let me just say that Manabus did nothing for me. Meta Manabus doesn't even beat like Metacham in like the yeah. ones or twos or something. It's so rough. It's so Do you know rough. What? And, and um, Azura was a huge pain for it because it beats three and it has play into a lone sand slash, right? And I'm still shielding the Venusaur. Also, running triple shadow is also a tough part because like I'm like I'm I don't have enough shields to shield all three, right? Yeah, that's difficult. I think with the Manabus, so one thing um that I guess it came up at Pittsburgh. And then also Zardi used it at Curitiba. Yeah. Is Shadow Ball. And people are using Shadow Ball just for the meta time. So dumb. Like just just yeah. run a different flyer at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm not saying dumb <laughs> for Zardi, but I'm just saying like the, the man of us as a concept. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It should dumb. Just like it just be, doesn't uh, yeah. meta yeah. 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 Unless it beats like the breakpoint meta I don't even know. But like it's just like 
Oh, it's yeah, rough. And you're shielding Thunderbolt from Deoxys offense too. Like it just like the the times I won, I feel like I should have won those games to my opponents just made misplays, which so like nothing on them too, but it just goes to show how bad my team was, or maybe how poorly I played as well. Because like like I was struggling. Besides my first round win, uh, because they, they just didn't have a lot of checks to so like a couple of things. I just had a bunch mm-hmm. of more bricks for their team. I, I don't think they had a check for Venus or Say Swap, actually. But outside of that, like I was struggling even for the for well, I actually only won one other set of battles. I lost to a Heliolisk. I lost to a Heliolisk. This guy bought it three games in a row, right? I won one of the games. So he bought it three games in a row. And I lost to a Heliolisk. And that thing, I didn't realize that thing was part normal. I thought it was like electric, pure oh, electric. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm, what, I'm like playing a little sand slash. I was running a Shadow Claw okay. sand slash. Right, I'm right. like, I can't Shadow Claw this thing down. <laughs> and it's a Lincoln's on counter, too. It was ridiculous. And some guy brought a Greedon. Like, I was losing the Greedon, oh, too, because really? Lincoln's on it was. <laughs> It was a rough go, man. Oh, yeah, shout man. out to Wade, one of my locals for it, uh, that ran it. But I was like, freaking, I'm losing the heel of this. Uh, my teammate ran Berto, took it all, though. He won the whole thing. So, you know, I'll, I'll take that as a, a win. We didn't, I, didn't even ba- I don't even battle him. Like, it's not, oh, you must have faced Berto. No, I didn't, even battle, I didn't even battle him. Yeah, I lost to Eight the Greats. I lost to uh, this guy named Wade, and I lost to Boombro, uh, okay, Boomer yeah, Bro, yeah, yeah. who was at Top Cut at Fresno. It was a pretty strong, strong. Oh, it's actually honestly, this local is pretty stacked, right? Of the players that you know, but then obviously some players do even better. We had Berto who won mm-hmm. it. Gerald was there, um, mm-hmm. extra X, and then Boombro, myself, um, Dre Flames, RC Cola. Just like a um, mini California regional. Yeah, pretty much. And there's a bunch of other people too. Pochum actually took second. Um, yeah. So yeah, he ran Greedon too, and he said it was it was killer for him. He almost beat Berto by like one HP. I saw in that like wow. it's screenshot. Yeah, I had to leave early because uh, I couldn't save for playoffs. I had some dinner plans, but um, but yeah, it was uh. Anyway, I'm glad. I'm glad. I uh, I scrapped. <laughs> I scrapped it. I I scrapped the team completely. Freaking mana bus, and y'all know how good my mana bus is. It was like a 0, 15, 12, or 13, or whatever. The rank three, and this could not do nothing. Yeah, not it's... nothing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll think of something bad for that. Huh? Yeah. Oh, what, oh, what do you say? I was just saying, rip mana bus, isn't it? Yeah. I can't, I kind of was also hoping it would be a, you know, I thought it'd be so good. Like breaker, it? Yeah. yeah. It's literally that many matchup, isn't it? Because, again, if you're running Shadow Ball, then it makes the Licky matchup worse because you're just throwing aerial aces at it. Yeah, but and it's I, a core break for Licky to have a mana jam, and it's just not, it's not good enough. It's not even core breaking. Yeah. Yeah. It was supposed to be, I mean, it probably beats Gligar. Enough, but... It does beat Gligar, but, like, when you yeah. barely beat Gligar... I mean, that's the th- but the thing is, like, a lot of people didn't bring Gligar into my team comp either. So, yeah, I don't know. They're probably too scared of Soul and Sand Slash. Anyway, yeah, we'll think of some bet for it. Maybe, um... Hmm. What what do you want the bet to be? Bro, I don't even know what yeah. this is about. Oh uh, no no so, <laughs> so, so uh, tra- we're talking about we're talking about we should make a oh. bet on play Pokemon tournaments. Okay 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 Maybe okay I'm, 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 good that. I'm good for that. I mean, but it's tough though because placement finished like there's not as many in the Australia tournament, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know like, like hey, you know gonna... what I said though yeah bro. <laughs> Yeah, you men aren't too far behind, you know what I mean? Hey. How, how many, how many are Sacramento? Not, small. <laughs> it, is, it is small, though. All right, let me, let me see how much, how much Sacramento is. We'll think, we'll think it's something before Sacramento starts, I guess. Uh, let me see real quick. Okay, so right, two weeks right. ago, it was like something like 61, you were saying. Yeah, yeah take a guess at how many there is now. Honestly, I'm okay. going for like 68, 68. Uh, pretty close. We're at 71. We broke 71. the 70 mark. Yeah. <sighs> It is what it is. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But anyway, I mean, hey, the world champion is going to be there, man. Come on now. Yeah, I got I got Mr. 6 0 against me going there, too. Elite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then everyone from my local that's so not me as well is going. Yeah. So uh, anyway, we'll figure out something. Eight the Great, the guy that beat me actually, too, mm-hmm. uh, said, El Mayo, I actually have at least 10 Galarian ponytails I keep at all times in case of mirror trace. Maybe we can mirror sometime. Oh man, we should have mirrored like a few days ago. Super hyped about the new regional spawns as well. Um, yeah, I think talking about the regional spawns at the tournaments. Um, T uh, Pseudopop says, I was actually wondering if Squirrel Trapper went into hibernation right before you read their comment. I wonder where <laughs> they are at now, though. Hope they're doing okay, Winky Face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, RC Cole says, No mention of SoCal Swabble's top cutting at Sacramento. 
Caleb got more to be worried about than just Axon and Elite. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mention. I, I didn't mention it just now too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, who no, took the no. local RC Cola? Was it the Cool Cats or was it the SoCal Swab? There was how many Swab was it? There were four. We're outnumbered. It was just two Cool Cats. It was Gerald Boombro, uh, Dre Flames, RC Cola, maybe some others too. Actually, that I might be forgetting. They got loads of teams, right? Yeah, they do. No, they, yeah, it feels like they got they, they got the numbers, but we're like yeah. the three hundred, you know. We're we're standing strong, yeah. right? Small but mighty. Small the numbers, but <laughs> uh, I shouldn't talk too much smack before I get destroyed. <laughs> That's okay. Birdo's going too, so we got we got two cool cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just uh, putting oil on him. Isn't it? <laughs> hey, hey, no, hey, no. I got I I've. I've been baptized. I have a new team, right? <laughs> I got, I got my <laughs> team. Really right. Justin Daniel says the resume would dodge. Uh, maybe just visualize on Twitter. <laughs> In quote, Stadium Elite has another announcement. Uh, while visualizing Jr. wearing an Infinity Gauntlet, and putting another stone in it. <laughs> uh, Wadaj is the captain of the yeah. Pogos. I doubt yeah. he's joining Stadium Elite. I right? don't think anytime uh, soon. Yeah. Also, what happens when just everyone joins a team? Who are you playing? Stadium Elite. At that point, you know. Yeah. Hey man, if, if that's the opposition the case, anymore, I'm, right? I'm, then Cool Cats and me are going to be like Neo, right? Against Agent Smith and <laughs> Matrix. Right? We're like the last few people say we're not, we're not gonna be sponsored by any any org. We're we're our Ooh. own entity. Yeah, yeah. So I already invested in the jerseys too, so it's it's too late. We're, we're not. Yeah, 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 okay. Time. No. No. Um, Mike Daniel says, took me two days to finish this episode. But anyway, Squirrel <laughs> Trapper, where are you at? The question no, is, was, was, it, was it an enjoyable two days or not? You know? That's, yeah, true. That's, that that's be... the real... That's what matters. What the heck was that? Anyway, sorry. Something... Uh, wait, let me check that real quick. Something like just dropped in my kitchen? What the heck? Yeah, I've watched too much Law & Order for... Uh... For you to just leave this alone, you know what I mean? Also, in my head, I'm just like, oh, this is just for the viewers, yeah. What if there you was know? something, huh? Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. What were you saying? I was uh, okay, I was saying, yeah, brother, I've watched a bit too much Law and Order, yeah, for you to like ignore that, yeah. So, obviously, going and checking was the right thing, yeah. But I was like, but what if it was like, so I'm broken. Yeah, and and I'm just like, well, okay, I know this is going down, but what do I do? You know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I should like, yeah, yeah. Just drop like screen recording like, or something. Screaming in the background, I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> and you're like, just to see your reaction. I'll save it for Halloween. I, I should I shouldn't joke around about that because it wouldn't actually happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my apartment complex pretty safe. I actually um. I have a summer. It might be in my closet, but in Atlanta, my I had a sledgehammer that I work out with. It'd be like <laughs> a sick. like yeah, it'd be like a sixty pound sledgehammer. It's kind of it's pretty heavy actually. I used to work out with it, right? So like if I miss with one swing, I'm dead, right? Like there's no time to bring it back around. <laughs> but equally, if you hit like, with one swing, true, they're dead. They're so... gone, right? Yeah, this ain't no WWE where they like cut themselves <laughs> the blade. They're like bleeding a little bit on the head. This is like they're gone. But I, I, it's not in my closet, I think. But um, but yeah, I used to have it sitting out in the living room in my mm. or my bedroom, my old place. No, it was uh, I had like a little suction cup thing mm. in my shower, right, to like hold like razors and stuff, like shaving razors, and it popped off and it fell down. Ooh. So that's what the sound was. It's funny because this happened like literally last week too. My, you know, like the chip clips, right, where you clip a bag of chips, right. Like it's like a plastic yeah, clip on, yeah, yeah. right? To like seal plastic bags. Bag like of crisps, up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, bag of crisps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, yeah, chips, chips for you are potatoes. You're thinking like, yeah, well, you got a stack of potatoes. Yeah, I had the crisp clip right on uh, my cat food, <laughs> my cat food yeah. bag, my giant cat food bag, and I was literally GBLing, and I heard like a crash sound. I was like, what the heck? And literally, I guess like the pressure of it. It just snapped, so the plastic just shattered and like flew everywhere. Wait, what? Yeah, I know. My cats were freaking out. Just like, what is that? I was like, I don't know. And I was looking for it. And I realized that the chip clip like just snapped. Yeah, wild, wild. I know, I know. Anyway, this is uh, like I said. This is like the second time I've seen, like random something just like sound fell, you know, fell out of nowhere. Yeah. Um. Anyway, like I said, 
<laughs> yeah, maybe a ghost. Uh, I got a whole story about that, but this is going to turn into like a four-hour episode <laughs> if I talk about that. Save for a different day. Yeah, Mike Daniel said. Yeah, so anyway, Mike Daniel, was it an enjoyable two days of listening to podcasts, or was it like, eh, I could have done with just half a day? You let us know. Uh, Justin Daniel says, uh, not knocking TPCI, but I am sad to hear streams are changing for EU, though. It's probably better for pushing them forward. The in-between matches material is so much more engaging with the fun catch challenge uh, challenges videos. I truly watch all of the stream versus when they are doing the same lecture video again. Don't get me wrong. They're very well done. No knock on the casters we made them. Just felt the EU stream side videos brought a holistic approach to the game versus a singular area since catching and socializing is a huge component of Go. Yeah, I mean, that's actually a good point. Yeah. I feel like those social videos were... They seemed like they were made, like, the day before. Like, they had a different... They pretty much were, right? I think. Yeah. 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 Whereas, the reason why we see so many of the NA tournaments recycling some of the mechanics videos and all that stuff is because we pre-record them and they just, like, use them consistently as content. Um, yeah. I think it's difficult uh, yeah. to decide on, like, a balance, right? Because you do obviously want those videos for like any new players you know to kind of inform them and stuff like that mm-hmm. but but for those that know, watch the, regionals consistently you're like yeah, you can only watch you know my I mean? my video on you know reading back lines and stuff so many times right yeah so. also bro i don't know if you ever saw this one yeah but did you ever see the the rap that they did i did bro. i did, did. and, and the first thing i thought was Thank God I'm not in you. <laughs> there's no shot you convinced me to do that. Right? Bro, that was the worst thing I ever Lumberger. saw. <laughs> oh man, it was yeah. That so they saw the, the interview worst. segments for EU, but they don't have those videos anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but, you know what? That one never came back. Yeah, and I think like rightly so because that was embarrassing, bro. Like, <laughs> Look, props to the casters that felt comfortable doing it. Yeah, it, it man. Ain't me. It's uh, not my cup right. of tea. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, but but you know, so this this comment was obviously before the Barcelona stream. Yeah, uh, I think, but I think like overall, it still looked really good. Yeah, they they yeah. did. Unfortunately, the, those videos, those catch challenge videos, are gone. Uh, but they still at least have the interviews, right? Yeah. Which I I think the interviews are cool. I just wonder if it. I guess maybe they're just setting up for the next matches and stuff because we didn't get to see the losers finals, right? Um, for day one. Uh, anyway, right, yeah, 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 you yeah, know, true, true. Yeah. and so I, I personally wonder if they cut out the interviews, do we see more battles? But maybe uh, they ran into yeah. some setup issues because you know, I the think... interviews are cool, but just like, are they every time you do one, you're 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 potentially Same delaying time. the stream, right? Hopefully, or... it's, it's just them saying up in it because yeah. then I think that's probably like bad prioritizing, you're yeah, watching yeah, watching. but I don't know. I mean, I, I think, I think. From what I hear, I think maybe they just ran into some delays and some rematches, mm-hmm. and that was why it wasn't because of the interviews. Because they still ran some of the breaks. I think the 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 biggest downside of it is actually the interviews are probably actually on the casters because they had to work more, right? You're yeah. interviewing, you're swapping out. Like they, the EU casters were working, right? Let me just put it that way. When I was watching it, because I, I know how much I work at these regionals, and when I looked at it, I was like, these EU casters were working more than I did, I think, right? Because yeah. they did the interviews and they like, because for me, if I'm there, I'm just commentating battles, and we take a break, and then we switch off, and I'm just chilling while they're while they're doing the stuff, right? And we used to have we used to have um we used to have to work on the admin table to do like the knockout Pokemon and whatever all that stuff, but now, uh, we have a we have a, like a sub- subject matter analyst essentially, and so they are, uh, for those people, they're inputting all the data and stuff now. So, so you're so, just like being chilling in between yeah. matches. Yeah, yeah winning that Starbucks bet. That's what I was doing, man. I was hand catching. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was doing last time around. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, that, that has a, been a thing always since Worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Also, also um, the you know you were saying about I guess we you know mentioned this last uh, week, but um, the commentators didn't feel too like restricted in what they could say you know so yeah they probably just talk about ivs and breakpoints as much i mean they might have breakpoints i don't know but i don't know they also rotated casters consistently like they yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. which me personally i don't love as a commentator because you like Mm -hmm. sometimes have chemistry with someone and like it's just like weird to like 
bring uh, like like I don't I, I don't mind working with different casters, but like I'd rather work with them the whole weekend than work with all like yeah. three other casters, right? It's just like a lot to like juggle around and stuff. Yeah, um, I feel like that's also something that you know, as a fan, you can kind of identify where there's certain people who work together better. Yeah, and then there's certain people where it's like you know maybe you could have just paired them up with someone else. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like me and Butters, like that's a great yeah. Time. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but but I mean, I think we're both professional enough to work with others. But again, like I would much rather work with just DeFi E for the entire weekend of Pittsburgh than work with DeFi e, Mark and Butters, right? Constantly right, switching yeah. it up. So um, it's just like part of it, just getting the group of things. Uh, chat says, Hey, Squirrel Trapper, where you at? You okay, bruv? <laughs> I, <laughs> no, there's no Squirrel Trapper comment on yeah, there either. Real talks, real uh, yeah. Talks. Justin Kimu says, Man, I'm going to be bummed when this four times dust event is over. I feel you. I mean, part of the, the biggest thing I didn't like about the four times dust event is the spawns are hard as hell to catch. <laughs> I will say that. But yeah. uh, Justin continues I got so much dust, I started working on an Ultra League Turginator. <laughs> <laughs> that needs 296 XLs out of 131515 15 for the rank one. So yeah. you need 131515 15 or better, IV, like a higher percentage IV to make that work. That's wild. Uh, well, but I had so much potential. It still might, you know. It's still yeah, might. Maybe, yeah, maybe there's some. You gotta change some of the fire. Yeah, they need to update yeah. fire. I like, thought we'd be using Gligar, right? Here we are. Yeah, so. it's true, it's true. Um, but I'm glad you guys pointed out some of the things that Niantic is actually, uh, and, and in parentheses, finally, thank the gods, doing right from the unlock event bonuses to the regional spawns coming off a really fun and well done global go fest to a move rebounds that actually opened up the meta a bit and made it interesting without completely upending everything. It's nice to see and experience an upswing after a seemingly interminable downswing. <laughs> um, a, a couple of things to share that might help with perspective. My son and I were listening to part of the episode. And he was very excited to hear about the regional spawns. We plan on going to the LA regional. He's 11, and that kind of thing is a real draw for some particularly uh, incipient battlers like him. The second is regarding large meta shifts. He was upset that Noctowl isn't as good now since he spent a fair amount of his time and resources building one for last season, and he really liked it. Just an example of what you guys are, were saying, larger meta shifts aren't always a great thing from accessibility perspective, and I think we all win if we can encourage the development of a larger player base. Sorry for the long comment, and where you at, Squirrel Trapper? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure yeah uh, justin actually one of my patron student supporters i actually met up with him and his son um and one of his son's friends at uh the pier uh it was during the global go fest actually yeah yeah that is the thing i will say though i did see a knockdown gbl today and yeah bro was an expert so it's but you know what i, I kind of get water. it as well because yeah. it's like, like, tongue, like hey, if man, yeah if man the buzz isn't doing that <laughs> then you know, man the buzz ain't doing the job guess, like yeah you need something. Stepping in again, yeah, but so, at least it's not as dominant, right? I mean, it's not it as dominant. Uh, yeah. But Metacham and uh, Lickathon cores are still pretty prevalent, so mm -hmm. it might not be the worst, especially in yeah. GBL. Show 6 yeah. might be a different story. DA Shakan says, listen to the whole thing while doing last minute grind. Probably will end at 109 dust. 109? I'm pretty sure that's Wait, is that 109 million. I think so. Because Dia Shakan, I remember in a previous episode, said that they grinded a bunch and were going, you know, they had a, a ton of resources. Wow. Wild. Hey, Dia Shakan, if you got a if you got a grinding like one on one course, let me uh <laughs> let me let me send that over to my buddy Anagor. <laughs> anyway, you know what on a level, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, like I don't even know what I'm doing wrong. One oh nine. I need to like um, if we're ever at the same regional, I mean, I'm sure it'll happen uh, one day, right? Maybe if I'm invited back, right? well, if I'm invited back, I don't know, with, with so many uh, EU casters, but if we're there, we should definitely compare like catches of the weekend, right? Because okay. if I'm there, I'm working the oh, event, bro, right? Do you You're know what the thing is? I'm not going to lie, yeah? What? If I'm at an event like that, yeah? You're going to be socializing? I am not catching nothing, bro. What? <laughs> like, You're not battling okay. like every day, right? Like, uh, yeah, also, yeah, like, okay, unless okay. you're like top cut, right? You're really not going to, you'll yeah. be sitting there watching, right? Small okay, so, that's so, while watching. Okay, I'll put, I'll put, uh, put on the Go Plus Plus. Go Plus. Yeah. yeah. That's that, That's as much as I'll do in it, yeah. Because the thing is, again, even when you're catching, you have to look at your phone, yeah. I can't really mold yeah, it. Right. So I'd much rather chat to people. I'd much rather watch the actual action. Do you know what I mean? You know, you know. Uh, I, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I think I think we need to really I really identify the root of the problem. What's the most important 
you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like it's this is this is why we had a three hour episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably it's not, not the about last one. The dust. Yeah. It's, it's about the people that the dust brings you. Or, uh, I don't know. The power I of guess friendship. So. I guess basically, so. you know, it's a uh, it's a bit too much to be doing like both. You know. Do you uh so have you been to like network not like like Pokemon Go stuff but have you been to like networking work events in the past or anything like that? No. Oh, okay, I was just wondering like if you enjoy those or not because I personally hate those, especially like if it's just like business oriented, like they're not like friends, they're just like work people. I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, I've not been to anything that. that's traditionally like that, okay. as opposed to like been to events to also network but like the event isn't a networking event you know? yeah 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 got you um but yeah okay. priorities, priorities. <laughs> um Khan continues to travel for pokemon is a really privileged activity there's a vacation time then travel expenses funny story before covid i remember waking up on a plane not realizing where i was then it hit me that I'm on a 12 plus hour flight to Taiwan for Relicanth and Unknown Z. <laughs> for those who traveled, I feel the per- preference is for the PVE event, a PV live events, um, GoFest, City slash Safari Zones, and now it's annual Hoenn type tour. I have been able to pull it off using miles and points. I have a handful of friends who do the same and another dozen who have gone to the NA only events. There's more value out of those weekends compared to a regional. That being said, seeing Nighttime Clasher's journey got me interest. Uh, got my interest. I'm looking to do one regional next year just for the experience. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and and I think the thing is the the regional spawns, right? And I was having a discussion with someone on my thread about that too. They're not like new spawns, right? Carbing's probably the newest Pokemon, but after the GoFest Global event, most people have the Carbing they need, mm-hmm. right? They have the XLs and stuff. Um and Wulu too, right? There's just Wulu spawning for like the world's event and the Wulu event and everything. Like people have this stuff. So like these spawns aren't and the, the bonuses aren't that novel, right? Plus 100 dust. I remember I have a double dust spotlight hour today, right? You probably already had yours. Um, but like you know, or not, yeah, like it's just like they're nothing crazy. It's just good for newer players, right? Like DJ Khan, I'm betting does not need any of this stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you would go for the actual in person experience, but it's nice to have these bonuses for people. That are doing PvP and stuff too. Like I, I'm actually really glad that they're not spawns of new stuff, even as someone that goes this, because that would be unfair in my opinion, right? Some older mm-hmm. stuff, like yeah, you know, true, true, true. Yeah. yeah. So a bus and also, I think it's a really and tournaments. It's, it's than, kind of um, well, an interesting way of introducing, like, not it's not IV manipulating, obviously, yeah. But again, the only way to get like you know certain IVs on things is to like catch loads. And you can't do that unless they're in the small. But the people who care about that stuff are most likely going to be the people out of the regionals. And so you have that opportunity. You know, like you said, you can go looking for a Mediceler. Um, and you know, the opportunity is there. So I think that's like a kind of clever way of doing that. Yeah. Also, I have to say, if you're considering going to your first regional, yeah. I, I can't speak from uh the perspective of, you know. Uh, someone who's more into grinding, of course. (laughs) But personally, I think that the experience of a regional is like something that will change the way you look at the game permanently, you know? Um, It'll get you hungry for more. Yeah, 100%. It's like the whole everything, like the, you know, all the battles being played, the community, the people you meet, the entire atmosphere, like everything put together is just the... it's something really nice, you know? Yeah, it's tough, too, for Jakan. If I recall correctly, DH Jakan lives in Japan. So I think that... Uh, wait, actually... Wait, if DH Jakan lives in Japan, why were they on a 12-plus hour flight to Taiwan? Yeah, maybe they weren't cool. in Japan. Why did I think... Or maybe DH Jakan was sharing their experience in Japan. Maybe, maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Well, yeah, let us, if you don't mind sharing where you're at, not specific location, just like what region you're at, <laughs> let us know <laughs> too, right? Because if you're in NA, man, you got yeah. a lot of opportunities. Yeah, after one, you, you'll be itching for more, right? You yeah, might be the man. next arrow traveling to like a frequent flyer to all this. <laughs> uh, Bish Lasagna says, Welcome in, Anacor. Day one listener here. It feels nice to have you as Caleb's new punching bag, JK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't say JK now, too soon. I mean, I'm yeah. <laughs> 
he's a nice little uh, warm up, you know, <laughs> for for the especially with these bets. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm letting him. Uh... I'm letting him think it's the punching bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't wait for the yet. Elo check. I'm just saying, I can't <laughs> wait for the Elo check. I know you ain't one of the first with the legend yet. I didn't see you on Twitter. Vishal Zahn says, on the subject of why NA doesn't uh, cap the regional registrations, has many factors. Some that I can think of is maybe safety, public transport, transportation not being the best, and maybe not many people can get off work, or maybe they can't afford getting off work to play a regional that you might not even win. I attended Malmo last season, and the amount of players coming from different countries was shocking to me since I was a local. After that, I got the taste of these regionals, so I'm going to attend Stuttgart this season, and I must say, the only thing I had to worry about was finding an accommodation relatively close to the venue. For those, these, uh, for sure, these events are really stacked. But for me personally, the community aspect is the cherry on top. So many uh, friendly and fun people that you meet there that share the same passion like you. And on top of that, you gather experience and get better. At the end of the day, uh, it's just a game, but sometimes we forget that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, well. literally just echoed the, the point we are making just there. Like, mm-hmm. couldn't have said it better. Yeah, the community aspect definitely too. And shout out to some people that are hosting this stuff. I know like SoCal Swablos or like RC Code, some people are trying to host a social for Sacramento and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there's 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 stuff happening, right? Uh, so who is Josh says, did you see the new release of another Niantic game, Monster Hunter? <laughs> you, you lay off 200 employees and then bring out another <laughs> subpar game. If you can't make the franchise of Harry Potter work, then why do you think another own original game will work? Do you know anyone that's actually invested in these subpar games and actually invest time and money? Um, probably period dot is the flagship. Um, but I'll give that a year, maybe 18 months. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's I guess like the thing is I also don't know how much of Niantic's own money needs to be invested in this, whereas they're partnering with Monster Hunter, right? Because it's like right. a game prior to this and Harry Potter too, right? I don't know like what the that those deals look like. Like, I think, like, I think when they launch these, it just depends on how much their initial funding and resources they need to make the game. Because if it doesn't cost that much, they're going to get, like, a huge payout right off the bat, right? With people buying, like, in-game currency. If it falls flat after a few, like, weeks or whatever, like, or a few months, like, it just depends on, like, how much it takes to maintain the game. I don't know. Like, I I, I, I don't I don't really know. I, I, I can't speak for it. Because I, I, it's weird, because you're thinking, like, do they do things for a paycheck? Because they got rid of remote raid passes, so that's like not really for a paycheck. Yeah. But then they're struggling economically, right? It's just like and like so. Why make another game if it's not for a paycheck? You're not. I, I could be mistaken, but I don't think you could change the world of augmented reality by creating <laughs> Monster Hunter for some yeah. answer, right? Like I, I don't like. It's not like. It's just people are not that invested in augmented reality for these games. They play the game for the game, for the franchise, for the gameplay. They're not playing for augmented reality, right? It's just not. Mm. I, I don't know. It's just I like I, I, I feel like video games too. Like video games don't need to be complicated. People still enjoy their Xbox, PlayStation, like Switch, PC games. They don't need like some virtual reality augmented stuff to enjoy the game, right? They had we've yeah, had like actually you know what the biggest telling point is? We've had VR gaming for years, over five years probably. It still hasn't taken off, taken off. Yeah, like, true. there is... The game has taken off. Like, certain games have taken off, but not as much as, like, a, like the newest, like, Smash Brothers or, like, the newest Halo or whatever, right? Like, I don't think, like, yeah. it's just... I think VR gaming, I feel like... I don't know in it yet, but I feel like the, the way... The method of VR gaming that has seen some success is more likely you know them ones where you go to like some vr place yeah and they're like yo you can jump in this booth and then you can like play against yeah. your friends yeah, you know what i mean innit? Yeah. so it's like that co-op stuff in it whereas like if you're playing vr gaming at home you just got the headset on I don't know, maybe, maybe it's fun for a bit innit? but but i feel like it, it gets old like i feel like the novelty yeah. is being at the arcade or venue yeah, of exactly. playing the vr game with your friends right yeah, exactly. but like if you had that home you and friend your friends would not be playing this 24 7 you'd be like <laughs> yeah. all right like what we're we gonna do now yeah, like we, yeah, we played yeah. this like vr resident evil game like 20 times like <laughs> like you know it's like yeah. the novel is like you don't it's just, it's like um uh i can't think of good now just, 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 just do you know, know what the mad thing is there? yeah is that like i <laughs> feel like so and I've I've felt like this from you know when VR gaming existed, but I think this is also because of like Sword Art Online, right? I feel like 
VR MMORPG, yeah, is probably the thing that could make VR blow up. But equally, it's also kind of dangerous because, bruv, even just playing like, you know, like a normal MMO, like, like what, RuneScape Warcraft. or something, yeah, yeah. yeah Wait, you play RuneScape? Like, nah, when I was younger, oh. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, I know, I know. When younger, yeah. I was an OG RuneScape player back. I was in the right on, bro. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Remember yeah. the party I, cats? I look, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I showed this on the podcast yet, but I used to play RuneScape back in the beta, and I was playing it when the Party Hats came out. And so Party Hats were these exclusive event items, and ever like Did years you after them? that, after that, you only get one exclusive item. I don't even think you trade or sell or anything. But the Party Hats, it was like when they're in beta, and so like everyone can get Party Hats if you're playing on New Year's. And I got a ton, right? I got I like six or seven. Bad. I gave my so I stopped playing right. This was when I was in middle school. I stopped playing, and in high school, my freshman year, so my friends were playing. I just gave them my account. I was like, "Yeah, you can you can take my account." You know what they did? They sold these party hats in the general store for one gold apiece because they didn't know what to do with it. Because they just they're like, oh, they didn't know what to do. With it. No regret. One of the biggest financial regrets of my life. Because those things literally sell for over like probably ten thousand dollars, like US, like USD. Real money. Real money. Real money. I could probably bought a house with that. Yo. Maybe only a condo in LA, but still, I could have bought something. Oh, like, those no. so much, and they just sold it. For like, it's like them stories of people where they're just like, "Yeah, back in the day, I had like ten bitcoins and I bought a pizza." Yeah, <laughs> or like two of butters. He sold his like first, like I think it was like his first edition holographic Charizard back when he was a kid oh. for a hundred bucks. Back then, in like the nineties or early two thousands, a hundred bucks was a lot of money. And you yeah, know, if they bought it for a hundred bucks, that thing's probably yeah. one of those one of those Charizard cards in that guy from Pawn Stars, right? That Charizard <laughs> guy. He probably holding on to one of Butter's cards right there. He's like, yeah, I got this from some sucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, that man. that card I guarantee is still traveling around somewhere. Whatever the card that oh. Two of Butter sold. Oh, yeah, boy. that's probably even a bigger financial regret than the party hats. But yeah, I yeah. I had the party hats. Oh, anyway, MMOR. You know what? The only yeah. thing I had, yeah, I had, there was an Easter egg, yeah? Uh-huh. So there was this one Easter event and some random Don would be running around and then uh-huh. he would just like randomly give you an Easter egg and then you'd have an Easter egg in your in your inventory, like yeah. a chocolate egg, yeah? Bro, someone at school, yeah, was like, yeah, if you, so I was like, yo, I'm just going to keep this egg because I don't know what to do with it, yeah? yeah? And someone at school was like, yeah, if you don't eat it, after Easter, it melts. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh shit, man. So so I ate it, yeah, and you just do some chicken dance. Bruv, these Easter eggs were worth millions. Oh yeah. No. And I was like, you I was like, it? for a chicken dance. <laughs> for a blood clot chicken dance. And then and also it thinking expire, back to right? it, yeah. <laughs> no, they don't expire. And I'm thinking back to it and I'm like, how would they know if it melted after Easter? <laughs> if they were saying this before Easter. <laughs> Man, uh, people Whoa. were gullible back then. When did you play? You must have been like a kid, right? I, I, yeah, it was like okay. maybe like 2006, is, 2007, something like this that. This is a story that could probably get me canceled. Yeah. But yeah. I, I used to run a scam in RuneScape because back <laughs> when catfishing and scamming was not as common. Like, oh, okay. like in the early 2000s, right? People didn't know about catfish stuff, right? Like, you know, I feel like if I was, if Tinder was around back then, man, I could have been making bank scamming people, right? Because people didn't know, like, oh, yeah, oh, like, true, true. this 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 hot girl wants to date me? Yeah, sure, I'll give you my credit card info, right? But anyway, so so I was scamming people on RuneScape. <laughs> and it was bad. Like, 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 I, like, I, like, ruined people's accounts, right? Anyway, I, um, let's save that. <laughs> for episode 150 all right uh, 150 all right how about this one one okay how about this i will share that runescape story with you all on either episode 150 or if anacor wins a regional or international okay so so so, so, so the, you'll oh, be sharing it in a few months <laughs> hey 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 and if it doesn't happen the viewers can blame you and not me, uh, right? Uh, no, They're no, waiting no. on this RuneScape story, <laughs> this this scam story from uh, because of you, right? Because they yeah. gotta wait. What? That's forty two weeks. That's uh that's almost the, a year. Yeah, that's yeah. almost a year. Yeah, so that's a long time. You might not even be so a co-host by then, right? <laughs> based on how long these co-hosts last. <laughs> but um, but anyway, yeah. So it's on it's on you. So if if you are mad about this story. You gotta ask, uh, you got you got get uh you gotta get Anacor to do it. But let me just say, my scam was so good, RuneScape had to up their security after me. <laughs> Yo, 
Not, maybe it, not it trust also, me because all the people running okay, the same okay, kind okay, of scam. Okay, okay. But let me just say, the scam doesn't work as well anymore because they literally up, upgraded their security system because nice, of it. Nice. Yeah. I actually like some of my mates who, and they still play now, I think, you know, but like when, uh, I didn't know them back then actually, uh, but apparently they also used to just like run scam rooms and, and stuff yeah. as well. I, I was and making real money out of it as well. Oh, I wasn't smart enough for that. I mean, I was literally in high school. I was like a freshman in high school. I, I will yeah, say, or, or no, I was like a junior, I think, in high school. I don't know. But anyway, I will say this too. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't encourage scamming or cheating or anything like that. I was a kid, yeah, yeah, totally, I, like totally. you know, I, was, I wasn't mature. I, I'm not making excuses. Right? It was still wrong of me to do. I will say though, after I scammed and got all this free stuff from people, right, the game literally got boring because there's no reason for me to fish and smell and mine and whatever when I could just scam someone for like a fraction of the time and get <laughs> twice the amount of stuff. <laughs> I literally had so much stuff I couldn't store my stash anymore. Because at a certain Yo, point, the items are so yeah. rare, they don't pay you in money. They pay you with other items. I was that's like, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of my rune two-hander, and they're giving me like a rune longsword and a rune full helm. I'm like, what am I going to do with this stuff now? Like, I can't sell <laughs> this either. Like, I'm just like running out of storage. Oh, anyway. Um, yeah. Anyway, that really... Bro, that imagine how part. much that that account was worth. Uh, the that's the like... party hats one? Or well, was, were they the same? Were they the no, same? No, no, it wasn't the same. They one. were different accounts. Yeah, yeah. So I started back up again too, which made me yeah. also regret the the party hat thing, because yeah. I started playing again. I could just log on my old account. I used to play back in the wilderness days. Do you remember that? I didn't realize that they scrapped it. I thought the wilderness was good. Yeah, they scrapped but they, the wilderness. Well, you don't lose all your stuff. They have like a PvP oh. like arena. But those are like, anyway, for those that don't know, it's an MMOR. There's like MMORPG, Giant World, right? It was a really fun game, honestly. It's probably yeah. still a lot of fun. But you had to, if you go past a certain threshold of the map, it's called the wilderness where you can fight other players. It's PvP. And the moment you die, you lose everything you're wearing, and everything yeah. you're holding except for three items, right? Wasn't it three items? You lose everything. I think you lose everything. Yeah. You lose everything. You lose everything. Yeah. So it was like so tilting because if you lag a little bit, you're just screwed, right? If I was you'd playing, also like, get loads I of people just like luring people in. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Being like, being like yo, yo, yeah. I got this like... <laughs> You'd be like, yo, come with me, man. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll go chew me chew. We'll, we'll, we'll gank someone yeah, else, right? Yeah. And then suddenly, it's going on you. They got friends waiting in the woods for you. <laughs> you lose all your stuff and you're so pissed. Uh, and you like spawn at the, like, the main castle, oh, right? Man. And you're just naked, right? You're just bare naked. And you see people and these other chumps spawning with you because they also just died and they're showing up. Yeah. You. No armor, no nothing, right? Uh, spawning in Falador, so like, yeah. These are battling and the you're fighting people, and if, if you're trying to heal up, right, in the middle of the fight, you start, you have to eat, right? So you see people, like, throwing spells at each other, all of a sudden, they pull out a lobster, and they're trying to eat the lobster to heal up. Man. What a weird oh, game. Man. Do you weird. know what, yeah, one thing I would say, yeah, and I can't really say how it is for young people now, yeah? Yeah. But, bro, growing up with early internet, yeah, in my opinion, taught you a lot of lessons do you know what i mean and, yeah. i'd <laughs> yeah. rather get like you talking you know, about i scammed, and scammed in the runescape yeah uh -huh. as opposed to on the road do you know what i mean isn't it? You're right so, exactly yeah that's that's yeah. i feel like that's why a lot of the older population were getting scammed they probably still are but like especially when catfish first came around they got scammed more yeah, because they didn't yeah. play the video game so they didn't know right yeah. they were like on these dating apps like oh my god or like oh this is someone's actually in my email offering bitcoin oh heck yeah like, <laughs> Right? I, mean, I don't even know if Bitcoin was today. It was probably just shit cash. But yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Because, because yeah, yes, I did scam people. But the reason why I started scamming people is because I was getting scammed and I learned from them. Right? Go, I, like, I ain't gonna go. make that mistake. Uh, anyway, that was a whole <laughs> whole tirade after who is Josh's comments about Monster yeah, Hunter. Man. But um, Fish on Heater says I was with Avrip when he was approached about the TCG cards. Oh, when he sold the TCG mm. cards at Worlds. It was so funny. We literally just checked in, and as soon as we walked out the door, this guy approached us. He asked Avrip what he was going to do with the, his cards, and Avrip just brushed him off, and we started walking away. The guy followed us and kept asking about it. It went back and forth like, How much do you want them? Avrip says, Nah, not interested, mate. And then the guy says, I have cash. I can pay you now. And Aver says, I'm good, thanks. The other guy says, I'll give you $500. And he said, nah, mate. Wait, what? And the guy says, the guy with 500 out of his pot a bag and shows us. And then Aver stared at it and said, surely you can do 600 
<laughs> and then the guy says the next 10 minutes was agonizing exchange where the guy desperately tried to convince Avrif to take the deal and Avrif tried to work out if this was legit or if he was being scammed. <laughs> We're just talking about being scammed. And then he said, he asked me if I could tell if the cash was counterfeit. And I was like, one, no, that's unfortunately not in my list of skills because it was USC as well. And two, if this guy's intention was to launder counterfeit money, I'm sure there's much easier ways to do it. In the end, Avrip took the deal and was pretty happy about it. But the whole time, the guy never realized that I was standing right there with a competitor's pack of my own <laughs> that probably would have taken the 500. <laughs> Bro. Like, good thing you did it, fish out of heater, because yeah. you can sell that for way more. I'm pretty sure I could sell my last year's world's pack for 2000 to someone I know. I might right. just do that, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, even selling for 1000 like I'm not, I'm not a TCG player. Like, what am I really going to do with it, right? Yeah. So, um, like, they're rare, but this is not as rare as, like, a first edition holographic Charizard, right? From, like, yeah. the night. Also, like, you... you One thing, because I used to, like, deal with a lot of, uh, uh, like, rare exclusive items, things that would go up and down in value. Um, and one thing I learned is, obviously, it depends on you, right? But sometimes, when you look at it, yeah, the let's say, for example, the card goes up by $500 over the next year, yeah? then you kind of need to assess it and be like, okay, well, was that 500 extra dollars worth it? Or if I had that $2,000 in the first place, would I have been able to like make more than the 500 over the year? Or would it have given me more value than just getting that extra 500 over the year? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people don't necessarily think about it that way, but it's like sometimes mm -hmm. when you really look at it, it's like you're waiting two, three years and it's gone up like five, $600. And it's like, was it really worth it? Do you know what was I mean? Was it worth the wait? Yeah. Yeah, Especially with like five, too. Maybe you yeah, could have used the 500 or something. Yeah. So okay. sometimes I, I think that's a good way to think about it as well. You know? That's a good point. And it's like, how much would it have affected you right now? As opposed to like, you know, if you can afford to just sit on it and wait. No, yeah. Fair enough, isn't it? But what if you get if like, you're yeah. waiting for like it to yeah. go up. Yeah. But you could kind of use the money now. And it's like, well. Yeah. Sorry, like you need so. to buy like a, you know, like a recording equipment. If you're a content creator. Yeah. yeah maybe you pay know. off. Yeah. 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 Wow. What a, so, so, yeah, because I remember Avif literally came up to me. It's like, hey, is this a real $100 bill? I was like, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's not the scam, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Quackadow says, Squirrel Trapper, where you at? Blink twice if you need help. Yeah, I haven't heard, seen any blinks in a while. So, uh, Quackadow also says, shout out to my local legend, 889 Breed. Taught me the superior way. Yo, for real. In our breed is loving it. Actually, in our breed actually came into one of my Twitch streams. It was like, hey, yo, thanks for the shout out because you listened to the podcast. <laughs> Someone sure. was so, uh, sent him the podcast episode um, and he heard it too. All right. Anyway, we only got two comments on the most recent episode. Uh, RC Cole says, cool to see EJB and Tomahawk on. Meta definitely seems healthy after Barcelona. Also hoping to see Caleb lose at our local for points. I did lose. <laughs> hey. yeah, I know RC Cole, you should root against me. I did lose this time around. Yeah. Hey, I will say. Fairness to myself, there's only two tournaments I have not swept for the locals. This is one of the two. So okay. I'm, I'm looking to return to my winning ways. Next, the next one is actually the week after uh, Sacramento. Okay. So if my Sacramento team is nice cracked, I'll just run it back. Yeah. yeah. Or, or it could be a double double like loss for me if I if I just yeah. can't figure out this better. <laughs> um school also says should be a good turnout. Better be a discussion this coming week, win or lose Caleb. Hey, you know me, man. I I, I mentioned it, right? I I'm I'm like I don't I don't know what people's perception of me is, but I'm never one person to shy away from getting like beaten and stuff. Like for people that like just like are like so insecure about it or like hate talking about their losses or whatever like i don't get it like it's just like it's happened right like yeah. like i got swept in fresno right like back to back right who you know so so did wtm go and so did uh you know asper asper Celta, right let's not forget that right that's just qualifier and <laughs> world Silk, right no don't forget yeah i remember my cohort uh but you know it's just like you know i don't mind i don't mind losing uh because you just get outplayed. It's a learning lesson. Also, if you let it consume you or let it bring you down, then you know it's it's only going to affect you in the future. But True. um, yeah, I'm not saying that RC Cole is even saying that. He's just joking around too. But just for those that were that don't know me well, right? That's like when I lost the bets to Speedy. I'm like I'll take my L's, right? I look. I wasn't like Speedy, man. I fulfilled my bet punishment <laughs> right away, right? I was never about dragging that on, right? I I. I'm a man of my word, right? I'll own it. 
Uh, Tristan says Pittsburgh was a challenge, not a cup. Also, the leaderboards makes it look like challenges give 15, not 30 for a first. Oh, man, that's a little rough. I, I guess I'll take a look at the leaderboard and see because, um, what do you call it? Berto won first at a challenge. So um, he's, yeah. he's either going to get 15 points or 30, but that's... I don't know how I feel about that, but it is what it is. Um, and then Tristan also says, really interesting discussion about travel awards. I agree that I would like to see first place get a travel award along with auto invite. And yikes, those taxes EJ had are brutal. Worth mentioning, though, that prize money has been increased from last season. Yeah, that is a good point. The thing the travel award is, I don't think it's just that's a lot more. That's a ton of money that the Pokemon company has to dish out. Because yeah, that's, well, that's bruv, it's the Pokemon company, man. Like. Do you know what I mean? These I men mean, got money coming out of the I, I, Pokeballs. I, I, <laughs> yeah, interesting phrasing. Um, no, I don't disagree with you there. I think, but the thing is, the budget, like for context for people, I think the budget for actual play Pokemon competitive, the championship mm. series for all the four games is a limited budget, right? Because that budget is going to the players for when they, when they win, the prize pools, the staffing, the venues, the merchandise. All that stuff. So they have to allocate it somehow. If they start giving travel awards like all this, we're going to lose out somewhere else, right? The production might be bad. The replay system might not be existent. Like the replay system, people think like, oh yeah, they just add a new program. No, that replay system costs money. Like per regional to have replays, it costs mm. extra, a ton of extra money. Yeah. Yeah. Don't quote me on it. That, but it's not yeah, free. It's not free. Right? Probably shouldn't so, say that, isn't it? Well, I mean, <laughs> let's I mean, be like, yo. My opinions are my own, right? Gave up so, our but, travel awards for the. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm, I'm not saying that's why they gave up travel awards. <laughs> so I'm just putting in context. Like, like yeah, the, yeah. the money the Pokemon company has is not like unlimited, especially for the championship series. Like, they have, I, I'm pretty sure they have an alloc- Again, don't quote me on this because I, I don't work for the Pokemon company. They just contract me for these passing gigs. But. I'm trying to give perspective to people. They, the, the money's finite and it, for, for these productions, right? I, I, said, I said this in the podcast before. They lose money on these tournaments because yeah. the, all the, the registration fees, that goes to the venue organizers, not the Pokemon company. The Pokemon company, the staff they have is actually not that many. They don't have a few hundred staff members. The people that are running, the, like, for example, for NA tournaments, they contract another company, Paperlight. Which have a whole staff of people. The amount of the actual Pokemon Company staff members that go to these events, Pittsburgh, for example, I think there's one, literally one wow. person from TPCI, and she, uh, her name's Katie. She's one of the producers of VGC. But but Daniel's on patern- uh, paternity leave, and then also our other person was just out. So but but it's it still ran great, right? All three games. But she's the only one. But she worked with the production company Paperlight to run all the stuff, right? So they had to contract them. They had to contract all the casters. They had to pay the prize money. They had to run all the streams and everything. They had to pay the staff that moderates all this stuff. So every regional and every tournament, they're losing a buttload of money, right? Yeah, know, but know, but the Pokemon Club is not hosting these tournaments for money, right? Obviously, yeah, they were doing this that, is then, also yeah. why I think about that as well, because I'm just yeah. like, obviously, they're not making any money out of it. They're not making any money. They're losing well, money. Then, but but, they're, but, well, but they're, they're spending the money they make from the rest of their company to invest into the championship series yeah. so that more people are bought into the brand and everything. And, you know, like there's, yeah. there's definitely some payoff for it. Right. Or they want to, like, like esports is not a money making business, right? Like you need to make money yeah. elsewhere. That's why a lot of esports orgs are struggling, right? Like actual esports orgs that sponsor players. Like there's no money to be had there. Like a lot of the esports orgs are like laying off people or like they can't sponsor players as much. Cause mm. like, what are they getting out of it? You know, it's not I like, I really wonder that to yeah. be honest, aside from like the esports, which, have like huge prize pools yeah i don't really understand how it's uh, a viable uh, i don't know yeah because that obviously the ones where it's like is that dota where it's like a 10 million or something to win the ti more than that you you want to know what donuts is how much how much is uh all right let me check this because there's what five players right and they yeah five players i mean they have a sponsoring org right so all right. Uh, so the first year Dota 2020, 2011, right? Dota 2, which was like the official brand, current brand. It used to be a custom yeah. map on Warcraft 3, so it was around for years to have that. First year, 1.6 million. Yeah, not just first place, just like all, all of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, second year, 1.6 million. Third year, 2.9. The fourth year, 2014, 
11 million. Whoa. 11 million. <laughs> that was a huge jump. What the 2015, 18.4 million. It's still a lot, right? It's yeah. still like over, almost like 7 million more. 2016, 20, uh, pretty much 21 million. 20.7, no, 20.8 million. 2017, 24.8 million. 2018, right? Obviously, it's like losing a little bit, but like, I mean, what are you trying to like? It's not like double and pass it on, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. you can't do that, <laughs> right? Uh, 2018, 25.5 million. 2019, 34.3 million. Almost 10 million increase in that year. Wow. And then there was a COVID year, so 2020, yeah. nothing. 2021, take a guess. It was the previous year, is 20, 34 million. Okay, I'm going to say 50 million because also they didn't have a previous year. Yeah, that's such a good point. So so they actually combined some of the funds from the previous year and added it on. But, but but it was under. It was 40 million. It was the most. Mad. Last year was 19 million. So a little under. Okay. Um, yeah, so the funding wasn't as good. But 19 million is still a lot of money. Yeah. If you so won the year 2021, bro. holy. Who won 2021? Um, so uh, yeah, so I watched it. It was actually a completely unknown underdog team. Like they were the complete underdogs. Was and this like, the European team? I watched a whole documentary about that. that uh, was... no. no, 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 yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. I the Dota documentary. That was the first yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. uh, um, with, with this guy named Puppy and whatever. Yeah, no, that was um, that was from this first year. But yeah, because it was like usually China was the best until then. But uh, no, this is um, it's uh Romania, Romanian team. Oh. Yeah, bro. Imagine. Oh no, no, sorry, sorry, no. That's where I was hosted. Sorry. Oh, okay. The the winning team, Team Spirit. Uh, it was Europe. It was a bunch of Europeans. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're. I don't really. I'm sorry. I don't. Oh, so like one of the guys, two of the guys were Ukrainian, and then the other three guys were Russian. Yeah. Mad. But anyway, they were just complete underdogs, and literally, like, just imagine. All right, so it's first place, they got 18. 18- Point two million. Second place, five point two million. Dude, that's a huge thirty million difference between first and Bro. second. Uh, I mean, besides just like the title and the glory, right? Anyway, esports. That got means some if money. you messed yeah. up, you personally cost yourself and your team like four million each, or three million each, mm-hmm. and just messing up in the final. Yeah, they beat a Chinese team too, and they they came yeah. from the losers bracket, the team that won. There was literally a bunch of nobodies that no one knew, and they kept upsetting people. After they, I think like they barely made out group stages, and they were starting the loser side, and they kept upsetting people. And the crazy thing is, their carry, like the main, the guy that does the most amount of damage, he played a different champion, like oh, oh, like different character, like almost every single game. Like he didn't repeat. I thought it was like a meme at a certain point, but he kept <laughs> winning. Right, and there's like there's like over a hundred characters, but most people stick to like the same three to four or whatever, yeah. right? Maybe five. They know how to play a bunch, but like there's certain ones they're good at, right? It's like it's like if you're going to Pokemon regionals and you're using like a different like team every single regional and winning, right? But like, but I mean, Wadash kind of did that, right? But like this yeah. is like over the course of like over like twenty something games because they're playing best of three. So like game mm-hmm. one different from game two, different from game three, and like and he was destroying people. It was crazy. It was like well, it, it's just yeah. It was just I was just, it was it was wild. But anyway. Um, and yeah, so their funding went down, but their funding is actually from something called the compendium where like their players like donate a certain amount of money, I think to, uh, to get certain perks, uh, like maybe like skins yeah, or whatever, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. This, yeah, so yeah. It's like their play base. So I think there might be, um, okay. Well, so you know what the thing is though, yeah, so it's like, it's like a, it's, they use like a fundraiser essentially for mm-hmm. the prize pool. And obviously, the bigger the prize pool, the more people are going to watch it, right? Because, like, wow, yeah, they're playing for a lot of money. Like, it, it gives more it, – it brings more people in to watch it. Yeah. 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 But but Dota, but like, the actual, the actual company, I think they only provide, like, a million or so a year themselves. Yeah. That, like, $39 million for the rest was provided from the player base. Just everyone else, yeah. Crazy. Sick. Crazy. Honestly, yeah. that's not a bad business model if – like no, TPCI sick. wants to do it. Like imagine if they got like Niantic and like or, like Wizards that does a like, card game and like Game Freak to do something. Like imagine if they said like, "Hey, pay for this battle pass, this world's battle yeah. pass, right?" Uh, and you get exclusive skin or like exclusive outfit or like uh, pose or bonuses, mm-hmm. right? And we'll donate like 
a hundred percent or like ninety percent of this money to the world like to the world championship prize pool. How cool okay, would so that be? How how many viewers you know how many people played again? this game? Huh? How many how many viewers was on the Pokemon Go stream? At Worlds again. What was, uh, what was it again? I think it was over a hundred thousand unique. Viewers. Over a hundred thousand. Okay. 100, Imagine, yeah, all these Pokeco Doms, yeah, they come in, they're spending ninety nine cents, yeah, a hundred thousand people spending ninety nine cents. Let me let me see. Don't, don't do this, Eric, or don't do this. <laughs> 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 that was late, yeah. <laughs> what, what did that calculator tell you? <laughs> what did that calculator tell you? <laughs> I put it down because I didn't want to know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know, what if you, what if you, you know? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> you could have made your life easier by just making it one dollar. <laughs> I don't know if you would pull that calculator tag, maybe you still would have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying. Oh man, anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh uh, oh man anyway all right so uh, you guys get the idea ninety nine thousand dollars for a price oh man <laughs> that is half nine yeah that's... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I hope you're listening to me tonight. I think. <laughs> yeah, uh, the point of that was <laughs> nearly a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, it's too funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they could have. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> A lot of money. <laughs> I mean, they, there's so many players that play this game that don't probably even watch PvP. Or they'll probably still buy it. Yeah. The casuals, you don't have to do PvP to want like a, a, a like a world package, world's package box, right? Yeah. Just maybe do like your you have like special spawns or like who pe- whoever buys it, they get like double dust or something for yeah. a week, right? Like something something not too crazy, right? It's like some people are like, oh, you're like paying for like bonuses and stuff, but like it's not. It's not that crazy of a bonus. Or maybe it's like, oh, you know what it is? I think Dota does this. They make it so that if enough people buy this compendium, like this box, mm-hmm. they give global bonuses to everyone. Right? Like oh, but then some people bonus. are going to be like, oh, why should I pay? And then everyone gets it. Uh, or do you get the box no, and the bonus? No, I, 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 no, I think it's like if you like everyone that bought the box gets right. additional prices. Oh, okay. Let's say like okay. it's like me, you, and our couple of friends. We buy it, right? Mm. We get like double dust if we get a hundred more people to buy it. We mm. get all of our other hundred friends to buy it. Now everyone that bought it gets a hundred double dust, right? So it's like encouraging mm. more people. You do. You can monetize that so easily. You could also mm. do like if you can't afford it, you could gift that box to a friend. Right, so for yeah. those that, that have money, they could buy more, and for those that don't have money, they can at least get it gifted. Easy. I mean, it's it's essentially what Niantic does with their ticketed events, except yeah, go, go and the worst thing towards, is, like, is the that the community like, day, ones. yeah, the mm-hmm. community day ones, those like those tickets, honestly, you're paying for a lot of nothing, you know. Ninety nine cents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, like well, that's, that that's the least. <laughs> <laughs> the value on that is, in my opinion, appalling. You know? So if people are willing to pay for that, then... Yeah. Uh, I'm <laughs> dying, I'm dying. Anyway, so there's, there's, um, there are ways, for sure, to mm-hmm. uh, increase the price pool and funding and stuff. I don't know if Niantic or TPCI will go that route. Uh, honestly, it's going to take a lot, a lot of collaboration with Niantic and TPCI. But also, yeah, I think yeah. if TPCI still want to go that route, they would have to do something for the other games too, right? Like DLC yeah. content for... But I think PC. they could do the same with the others. Yeah, trading card game might be the harder one, but like... Don't they again, have like some online 
I I honestly mm-hmm. don't even care if mm-hmm. like the funding that Pokemon Go does adds to the glo- like the global prize pool for worlds, right? Like I honestly don't even care about that. You know, like for for the other games. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not a big deal to me. I'm not like possessive like that. But to really amp up the competition, you could say the prize money raised from Pokemon Go players goes towards Pokemon Go's worlds. The prize money raised from VGC players yeah, goes towards yeah, VGC. Yeah. So then you got people like, oh shoot, well, <laughs> yeah, we better step yeah, up yeah. our games, too, right? And the Unite players are going to be donating, right? So, bro, you know what the mad thing is as well? Yeah, is that like, so so many players play TCG, yeah, huge mm-hmm. game. And obviously, as a result, they've got like, you know, the larger prize pools and things like that. Yeah, bro. The amount of casual players for Pokemon Go, yeah, you could get some people flipping. You yeah, know, you you'd get bro, hundred thousand. Yeah, you get some people being like, I think I, cards, I read you know? somewhere that um Pokemon Go is the is the most played Pokemon game of all time. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, because if I you count every that, casual yeah. down to the app, like that's way easier than buying like a Switch and a VGC thing or yeah. buying cards to build a deck with, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't even know how you track the TCG stuff. But anyway, that does it for our questions. Man, you gave me a good laugh. I will say that. I will say that. We're, we're an hour and 20 minutes in. We just got to through the comments. But hopefully you enjoyed the ride because yeah. I, I still can't believe that one. <laughs> anyway, we had Kurt Tiba this past weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. Did you tune in for a lot of it? I tuned into some, but I didn't tune into yeah, all of it. I watched nearly all of it. Um, okay. I didn't watch the um I, I missed like a few of the winners finals of day one yeah um but it was because i went out for the first time since i came to london so. oh okay nice yeah, yeah. a little party um but otherwise i watched it all and honestly right you know how much i harp on or have been harping on about Har Jeffy like last. Har Jeffy's right? super underrated. I don't even know oh, he's underrated. I, I think globally, because I think in Brazil and Latin America, they know how good he is. Yeah, but like, but I think at Worlds, he just he it was not his day. It was uh, not how did he World? Well. He, he not, I he think he Kappa. went like either like o two or one two something. Mm. It, it it wasn't a great show in at Worlds. I yeah, I'll look that up while you. Uh... Yeah. Wow, so yeah. yeah it wasn't a great show at worlds and honestly i think that was one of the main things that in my opinion uh you know stopped him from being this household name yeah because yeah. again for me yeah personally i thought he was still a household name in it yeah but yeah you know it's a bit harder for the latin players to break through there i right. think similarly with the japanese or not the japanese sorry the asian players as well it's like mm-hmm. you know unless you're constantly number one on the gbl leaderboard then again it's probably difficult to like you know break through into like becoming a household name but right 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 yeah this weekend this man, this man went undefeated oh yeah uh, he went he went one and two at worlds yeah he lost yeah. and then won and lost no that's yeah. tough i wonder who he played so, against but yeah yeah go ahead he was uh so uh, yeah this weekend 18 nil 18 and zero. Yeah, and Crazy. honestly, no one's ever bro, done it before. No one's ever done, and you know, okay. So here's the other thing as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the let's let's put a bit of context around this for everyone who didn't watch the regional, right? So, you know, some regionals are more competitive than others. Yeah, um, some yeah, regionals have more players than others. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. But uh, you know, it's true. true yeah yeah it's true some some regionals are more competitive than others i'm not saying like to the extent of how uncompetitive a regional is i'm just saying some are just way more competitive than others Mm -hmm. right some regionals are you know have a lot more attendance than others right this regional was capped out at 128 Mm -hmm. um first latam brazilian regional of the season capped down at 128 if let me let me pull up the bracket yeah because if you look at some of these, and this is not even day two, yeah? This is the winner's semifinals, yeah, mm-hmm. of the group stages. Bro, let me let me read out some of these matchups, yeah? Winner's semifinals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then everyone who's listening, you can you can really, you know, realize what kind of uh, regional this was, right? Okay, winner's semifinals. Zardi versus JW Naldo. 
Yeah, that's yep. one of the matches. Usual champ versus LAIC champ. Paulinho Taji versus Mystic Chansey. So Paulinho Taji, the the one we were talking about that's earlier, the Greninja. Greninja. Yeah. Wait, who, who, um, who was the person they placed? Mystic Chansey. So Mystic Chansey actually, I think, uh, might have topped some regionals, but definitely did uh, relatively well in uh, right. some of okay. the previous I don't know uh, that name as regional. Um, Lindos Hajefi versus Marto Halde. Mm-hmm. Um, Lindos T. Steiner versus Patrick Albany. You've got all these world's players. Arneto 999 versus Lindos Juice Muniz. Um, she was the one who I'd say was probably the other like uh, noticeable uh, feat in this event because okay. she'd uh, top Natal before, um, okay. did decently like you know just missing out on day two previously, but really a uh, uh, really good performance this time around. And she came third. She came third. Um, wow. Yeah, she That's came well. third. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she beat I think Zadi. She beat Patrick Albany. Nice. Um, I think I saw on stream yeah. earlier on day one, and she was facing um. Who was so she, she would have she been facing... against Patriki on day one, yeah, in the winners' finals. Oh, no, 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 earlier it oh, was like an uh, earlier yeah. round, yeah. She was so facing... Arne- probably Arneto if it was the was that Arneto? No, it was someone else, it was someone else I recognize. Who else did she battle that this weekend? So, Faye Martoni, Maldobla, uh, that's it. So, it would have been one of them two. To be honest. Oh, maybe I'm thinking someone else then, yeah. Maybe it was another woman that was battling. Um, but she was. Usually- but yeah, so th- this was just like I said. This was just the the winners semifinals mm-hmm. of uh, of this regional. Yeah, you had so many matchups of wow. you know previous world qualifiers, um, and yeah, they, you you can't stop Lindos Harjefi. It's, it's quite dude, it's wild. He so for context, Harjefi won the first regional last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was actually, I think, the first world's qualifier because yeah, they only yeah. had like a one day tournament, right? Yeah. So he was the first one to qualify for worlds last year, mm-hmm. first one from Latin America to qualify for worlds this year. Uh, obviously, yeah. you know, uh, not including world champs and stuff and or whatever, but um, yeah, just crazy consistent. And he played really well at LEIC last year, too. He made top cut, top yeah. eight, and he lost Probably, to well, Diego Yo. Iova against one yeah. of the craziest games I've ever seen, right? It was such a crazy game. Um, but he just had like the yeah, he was I think he just he was able to much shot down at a low nine tails, I remember, yeah. because of two turn over three turn to get the move. But it was like super close. But yeah, Hajefi actually, if you don't include worlds, has not failed to top cut a tournament yet. Um season one, he played the only Brazilian tournament, which was uh what was it again? It was uh, I I don't know. I was um, I'll but that one um, and he topped. And then obviously last season, you know, first tournament and he qualifies. Second tournament was LAIC and he yeah. came I think third. And then the third tournament he played last year was Sao Paulo. Yeah, yeah I think he came capped fourth out at two hundred and fifty six. Yeah, ma- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Neto would got third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, top cut, um, Sao Paulo, 256 players, came fifth place with a Shadow Alone shadow, Grimer. Yeah, I remember that. Bro. <laughs> shadow Alone Grimer. Well. Do you know what I mean? And the mad thing is, as well, yeah, is that, like, I spoke to him after that, yeah, and he was like, I was like, bro, Shadow Alone and Grimer, yeah? He was like, yeah, honestly, I think I would have got further if I'd have used it in a bit more in, like, some of my last matches. I was like, bro, this is mad because he didn't even go in there memeing. He was like, no, Shadow Alone <laughs> Grimer is the actual play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he just went and proved it, you know? That's wild. Um, and also, insane. like, not top cutting at Worlds is like, you know, you're playing against some of the best players in the world. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He, he lost to, he got 2 by Lyle Jeffs at Worlds. He 2 Dancing Rob, and he got 2 1 by Scaffo. Yeah. So, so you know, it's a pretty, uh, uh, pretty yeah, stacked field. Difficult. Yeah. yeah yeah like i I feel like in worlds in general right it's like even if you go o2 it's it's like anything this happen. is worlds do you know what i mean worlds, you know? so yeah. you can't really feel bad about that i obviously you can feel bad about it but it's like you know it doesn't really attest to your ability as a player necessarily. yeah so yeah you're playing against something um else. but um we also had so yeah obviously 
how Jeffy auto qualifies uh, for winning. Um, and then in the top cut, you also had Zardi, Paulinho Taji, Patrick Albany. Zardi um, and Pat- Patrick Albany are super consistent too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because literally, two of, the, two of the original Brazilians that made worlds were they mm-hmm. only two Brazilians that made worlds season one? Yeah, so that was the only, um, yeah. the only regional. Yeah, I keep Zardi and Patrick Albany. Cool. Uh, it was uh, Joina Vili. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, so they taught mad mad uh yeah mad regional but i think what was uh super interesting right is the meta because... <laughs> yeah rattle off his team he was running dynamic punch on his match yeah 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 so he was running yeah. dynamic punch and i'm assuming also the uh break point as well okay so harjeffi's team superior umbreon pelipa shadow alolan sand slash medicham and swamper yeah, that team is super anti uh, Gligar too. Yeah, and on, you know what? Honestly, I I like the team you know because I think I think okay. So Superior yeah, again, I think it's in such a good place because you've got the bulk. Yeah, yeah. you've got the really nice coverage over. I say coverage over Medicham, but the thing is, is that like Frenzy Plant is still better DPE than. Uh, area lace even yep. if they're super effective but the frenzy plant i think is the most important part of it because frenzy plant is just such an insane move yeah mm-hmm. so i think when you have like a bulky pokemon which also has a relatively fast but super hard hitting move mm-hmm. you just have something that's super balanced right right and then having that extra coverage of area lace now actually being a, a usable move um, you know, it means that you don't have to throw two frenzy plants at Medicham. You can throw one, and then mm-hmm. you know you can save energy in certain scenarios. Makes Superior a really, really good one. And I think again, you're not really wasting much energy on Superior with, no. with those kind of teams. It's really good. Uh, what's this Shadow Call alone saying slash? Uh, Powder Snow. Yeah. Oh, and he's, that's he's another a little, development. He's a little bit weak to Lantern. It was non Shadow Snow. Uh-huh. Yeah, so the rest of his Medicham, Pelper, yeah. Upper, Superior, Umbreon. Well, Shadow you know what? This is the like... interesting thing. So obviously you have the hard check in Superior, yeah? Right. And watching Umbreon. his games, yeah. he knew that his Medicham was a very comfortable Lantern counter. Yeah. Having well, with Dynamic, dynamic Punch, punch it's one less there. counter for the second Dynamic Punch. So it's yeah. actually not, not bad, yeah. So he, you know, and you could see he played it in that way as well, where he was like, you know, even if he caught like uh, a Lantern on the lead, He'd be fine just leaving it mm-hmm. for the Medicham to deal with, you know? Yeah. Um, and then you've got obviously Alolan Sand Slash, which can deal with it, mm-hmm. non Shadow Swamper, and Umbreon. Now you're only really weak to Lantern with that Pelipper. Isn't his team a little bit weak to Umbreon too? Uh, I, I mean, I did see people bringing Umbreon quite frequently against him. Yeah, I mean, he has a um, jam, but that's about yeah. it. Is is definitely safe, um, but again, I think you know what he, he like. He was just playing it super well, right? He was, yeah. uh, um, you know, staying in the mirror for a decent amount of time, using his superior in those Umbreon matchups as well. Mm. So I think again, it's like it's when you say it's weak, it's like it's more so that it's just safe to bring, but it's not necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily like putting in like tons of work unchecked you know what i've been good into this team mm. altaria, oh, altaria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's five yeah. out of six uh dragonite is actually not too bad too dragonite is actually really strong to that team yeah dragonite uh but he probably just didn't yeah. run into a lot i didn't see a lot of dragonite in the top cut yeah or in- well there's paulinho taji apparently ran uh, shadow dragonite in top cut. okay did, but, did um, they face I think flyers wise? No, they didn't. They didn't oh. go against each other. Um, but I think you know what the interesting thing is is that like the flyer slot, which I think we've been so used to that slot being a uh, almost like a given, right? You know, you last season it was like well, you always had the knocked out, or you had oh, the Altaria, Altaria yeah. or you had the Charizard, and even in the last couple of regionals, it was generally the Gligar, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but you seeing a couple Frostlass, uh, Sableye, you know, just in in, uh, 
in those sort of anti anti medicham roles instead. But the amount of grass is insane. And I think this is probably something that's going to make people pivot a bit more towards. Uh, oh, there was a pelican here as well, actually. What would they pivot towards, so? Um, I was gonna say, uh, yeah, I, I was are like more consistent, but like, yeah, yeah, like, what are you gonna uh, already move to? Yeah, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the grass is actually really safe right now, yeah. yeah. So, I played yeah. Venusaur in my local and I hated it because I had to shield everything, yeah. It was so like, That's Superior so just has the bulk, right? Yeah, you lose the head to head, but like, you're just way more flexible. I felt yeah. like I had my back against the wall playing every one of my games outside the first round. Mm. I just like, I barely could eke out wind if I had the chance. Yeah. And even losing, you know, you're saying losing to head, the head to head, but like, uh, it's not even you that get a bad. bit of an energy advantage, then yeah. you're like threatening you're to chill. you're chill. Races pretty soon. Yeah, they have to like bait with like frenzy plants to have it. I don't yeah. know, but anyway, so, it's a. Uh, yeah. Anyway, huge congrats to him, though. Holy crap. What a run. You can't top that unless you do 100% yeah. win weight at, like, a tournament that's bigger, right? There's no yeah, top yeah, true. Well, 100% at an IC, I guess, is the next uh, the next feat, really. Because I, 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 I yeah, sort yeah. of want to feel like ICs are going to be 256 cap, right? And you're you're attracting. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'll, I'll take I'll take a hundred percent on a on a two fifty six cap at a regional, right? That has more than yeah, 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 years, yeah, right? yeah. True, true, true. Yeah. I mean, look, it's... but yeah, honestly, insane, and especially because also like last season, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what was the was the highest percentage Jakobovic? It was something like ninety five percent, just dropping one game. Yeah, yeah, something like um, that. And then you had some people like, you know, Human Catcher Bug, Paula, like floating around that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. but, but just go, to go straight out 100%. 100% at the third regional of the year. <laughs> so mad. <laughs> it's so mad. Uh, bro, this guy was like, oh, I'm thinking about like traveling. Yeah. I was like, bro. Yeah. Obviously, I would love to see you at EUIC. Yeah. But I kind of want to qualify as well. You know what I mean? No, no, no. <laughs> Man's uh, man's gonna start eating up everyone's championship points. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, right. Yeah, no cascading invites. Yeah. What an impressive run, though. Big shout out mm -hmm. to Hard Jeffy. I'm very, I'm definitely someone to watch out for in LAIC. Here's the thing: LAIC is in November. There's no other yeah. tournaments in all of November. Really? Not a single one. Not. No, not a single tournament in any region. That's really interesting. So uh, the only, schedule. the only thing, yeah. I think it was like that last year too. I think, it was like I think there was like a European Might have been one European one. one. Yeah, but there's yeah. none in Europe nor NA. Mad. Yeah. No, wait, bro. There's Gdansk and uh, Brisbane. A week after LAS East. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can forget about Australia, but like, there's all Poland. Um, you better sleep in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so everyone in Australia forgot so, about it too, so you're the only one yeah. there. <laughs> you're all going to hear that RuneScape story real quick. <laughs> yeah, don't watch December. Christmas present. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas yeah. present to the fans. <laughs> all right. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, what do we have? We've got four regionals next month, mm -hmm. um, and bad. then wait, four just LAIC. four, there's like three in NA alone, yeah, yeah, three in NA and Lil. Lil's the third weekend, yeah, yeah okay, because yeah. Peoria, Sacramento, then Toronto at the end, yeah, yeah, wow, that's gonna be a packed month, too, yeah, and then uh, was it like one, two weeks break, which is nice, and then LAIC. Yeah, uh, Gdansk and Brisbane are actually on the same weekend. Oh, they uh, are. Yeah, okay. bro. Do you know what the thing is? Yeah, Wait, where's is Gdansk at? Poland. Oh, oh, there, there, so there's there's two and there's two other ones in November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Gdansk and Brisbane. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there'll be official stream for the Gdansk one for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's unfortunate because like there's no overlapping regionals aside from Australian regionals overlapping mm. with other regionals and i'm hearing like the thing is i really want there to be uh some streams yeah right? and Can i you know all set something like, up? like like just locally uh so okay i i don't know yeah yeah i know that steve has been you know like chatting to the people and trying yeah. and i think he's saying that they're not too into the idea um that said 
I personally want to explore all and other avenues. Yeah. So I'm going to see, see what can be done. You yeah. Know? If it can't be done by Brisbane, because, uh, yeah, that'll be the first one. Then at least by Melbourne, which is the second one. Yeah, I really want there to be something existing in it. Yeah, because I think that's kind of so dead, man. Do you know what I mean? Like the last time I've been putting on streams, and even the what was it, Santiago stream yeah. was literally just some guy's Twitch account. It was just one guy. He was like the only yeah, company. Man. Yeah, Do but it was, I mean? it was cool it, just to have the footage and see the battles, right? Yeah, it was good, you know? Yeah. Um, would you try so to come I... in Australia if you had the chance? Nah, bro, I want to play. <laughs> like, you know, honestly, Wait, honestly. Uh, how did the commentary go? Because you, I know you commentate something for Go yeah, yeah, with yeah. Steve, right? So, so yeah, how'd okay, go? So I, I didn't get a chance to check out the VOD yet because I, I think I was like at my tournament when that happened. Yeah. yeah. So I, I haven't watched it yet either, but um, so I was thinking about like a lot of the things you were saying. Okay. Uh, like what's and, that? Yeah, like, yeah, and I was, I was I like, or like, like huh? wait, no, like, no, just yeah. about like, um, uh, like things that we've talked about, like other commentators, and mm-hmm. like things that you say is like you know most good practice, that sort of stuff. Yeah, so I was like thinking about all that, all, all those sorts of things, um, seeing if I could, I don't know, take it all in. Yeah? And bro, my first sentence on stream <laughs> was so dead. I was like stuttering words and all sorts of stuff, yeah. So oh, after that sentence, gosh. yeah, I was like, you know what, bro? I was like, I was like, this is not the way. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, this is not the. I was like, whatever that sentence was, yeah, that has to go. Um, you know, I'm gonna do our listeners a favor. I'm gonna <laughs> clip that segment and throw in the podcast right now, so you can listen to it slash watch it on YouTube. Cue now. <laughs> I'm King Duxpool, also known as KDP, with my co-host Anacor. Welcome in. Hello. So we uh, are following up last week's uh, gym leader battles. And Accord, do you want to explain how the tournament works? Right. So I believe a majority of you may be familiar with the Ghost Stadium lobbies. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, yeah, it's so, I haven't uh, seen it yet myself, but uh, I'm going to. We're gonna have a... yeah, but the rest of it, yeah. After that, I think it was fun. You know, me and KDP, we were you know like throwing out the things. I was doing okay. So some of the things I was uh, doing as well was like you know trying to uh, trying to like explain what's going on and potentially also give reasoning behind questionable decisions. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, which I thought was uh, you know, like I said, sometimes it's like harder yeah <laughs> to do. i think it's okay to call um, misplays too right like you, you want to be like yeah. nice about it. be like oh i think like i i would have personally like to see you mm-hmm. know this person do this instead yeah. or like oh, well there know, was like, there was one guy who was consistently like throughout multiple games he would put himself in a really good position with his steelix counter swapping something mm-hmm. and then he would just throw all the energy and we were like uh... every time he does that he's he's thrown the game because every time he does that he loses Mm -hmm. yeah and we were commenting on that being like you know what you know he's like obviously recognizing that yeah he's in an advantageous situation but then he's throwing all the energy and he's getting nothing out of the matchup like yeah you get switched but then you just get counted down and yeah you know like what did you really gain was it uh Uh, well these are like top tier battlers too though right it was like what was it elite tier of of uh the thing go stadium thing I don't yeah. know. I've never participated in their tier, so I should yeah, I, I participated, I think, for a season. And, yeah. And, and did it. Imagine who was in my tier when I started off. Statistan. Oh. <laughs> hey, but, me and him are the homies on that Brazilian squad, man. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're facing JW. Oh, I've seen all those... picture. Yeah. 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 I've seen a little picture you posted. Yeah. 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 On Instagram? Um, yeah. 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 But you follow me on Instagram? Wild, well. Instagram. No, no, no. I don't. But like, um, I think it was Pench who posted it. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I okay. saw it and I found it so funny because I was like, hey, bro, they're literally. I'm the only person on the squad that's gone 3 0 back to back, man. I was hurt. Heck yeah. Oh, I had a bad team. Stan and David drop a... They dropped a game, drop but I think they both went 2 1. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. My, my comp was bad, but I was just making all the reads. The guy top left it on game three. <laughs> <laughs> he had a Shadow Swamper to my Giratina, but it was Hydra Cannon and Sludge Wave Swamper. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I think I saw shield too. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. like that. Um, that's when you I, know you're like. 
Yeah, we're facing JW Naldo's team this week, and there's a chance. Uh, probably, yeah. Uh, I'm not actually sure, but there's a chance I play JW Naldo too because he plays Ultra League, but there's two Ultra League slots. He switched back and forth between the two, so I don't know who, who who's going to be in that slot. I'll I'll. I mean, by the time he hears it, it's too late, but I'm like, hey, I'll still be in slot one. You know where to find me, right? In before my 03, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that image was funny, man, because it was like, it was like, obviously, you three are the only foreigners, yeah? <laughs> yeah. You three are taking up three out of five of the slots to represent. Well, yeah, so, so, so there's, there's <laughs> ten. But there's two parts of the photo. So there's a part I, one. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. But so, yeah, in the part two, that's where the foreigners are yeah, in. Yeah, so yeah, okay. we're, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just that part one. And I was like, nah. well, they're really uh, yeah. showcasing it, the, <laughs> the imports. No, it was funny because I shared that on my Instagram story. And then one of our listeners replied. He's like, oh, wait, was this the team you and Aaron were talking <laughs> about the podcast? So like, you know it. <laughs> hey, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Mm. I'm throw, throwing LNDS Caleb right there. I'm going for a name change. <laughs> Although these guys aren't LNDS people, they're just um yeah yeah they're just a bunch of Brazilian models. LNDS yeah. more specific, yeah. But anyway, oh, I look forward to watching your clip too. Was it fun though, commentating? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice. I'm not gonna lie. Also, like I went out the night before. Uh huh. Um, and the thing is, so since I've been in London, I've been like, okay, I can't go out until I like deal with all the things that I need to deal with right mm-hmm. cuz like when you go out then you lose sleep and then yeah. it just makes it really hot, like a bit harder to catch up mm-hmm. um but it was like a friend's birthday and then one of my other friends was like like she knew I was in the country I didn't told anyone yet yeah um she was like yo you have to come so I was like okay fine and so it was it was kind of nice nice to see everyone but I got back at like 4 in the morning Ooh. Um and then like I woke up like normal time and honestly the entirety of the Sunday I was just like oh, I was not feeling it <laughs> so I was I, I really wanted to cancel I'm not gonna lie yeah uh, but you couldn't cancel it um, yeah yeah but actually uh, yeah you know, actually went uh, went pretty good went I will say I don't really sleep a lot for these regionals and tournaments either I'm usually running on pretty low sleep too which I is... don't know how you do that but... It's just like the I traveling, understand. the jet lag, and then sometimes yeah. I just, yeah, it's just like, and like, because we had to get up early as well for call times, so like, yeah. we're like, grabbing dinner, and I'm like ironing my clothes at night, and you know, at Pittsburgh, I'm still yeah. GBLing at night. That is, that is wild. But, yeah. But you know one thing though, yeah, is that like. Well, you didn't have any breaks either, right? You just went the whole way through. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't even that, it wasn't that long. It was like maybe three hours or something. Okay. Um, but I think one, one thing, yeah, and this is like, just. I feel that generally in it, yeah. So I'm one of them people where if I get tired, yeah, then everything shuts off. Mm. And this has been the case in like social situations, in like just anywhere where I require some like brain capacity, yeah. yeah. If I get sufficiently tired, then it's over. Do you know what I mean? And uh. so it's like, you know, I- I'm here. You're you're like, yeah, I'm GBL in like you know in the middle of the night, and so I'm like, bro. I would not be able to like count my moves at that point. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I still make some misplays at times. Like last night, yeah, I, I just, okay. I just operate on low sleep, dude. If I actually slept like eight hours a day, I'd be, yeah. I'd be a god. Call, Honestly, I'm so envious me that people Jesse. can like <laughs> <laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah, I'm so envious of people who can like operate on like no sleep and everything. It's good and bad, you know. It's not great for your health. Like, it's it's not great for your health, but like having the capability to do it when you need to do it yeah just think about my potential if i didn't if i had sleep. bro do you know what i mean i, I yeah. touched mercury when i was a kid too imagine if i didn't touch that mercury <laughs> i used to play i played with mercury bro. i didn't know what it was i just kept pressing it kept like multiplying i was like what's going on what the hell yeah how long did you do that? uh well so it's like an old school thermometer that broke i was like playing doc my friend he said it was how cold long were you and playing he dropped so like it, it, i didn't want to tell my parents right so i swept a little glass through my trash can and the mercury is there over there I couldn't sweep with the mercury very easily, so I just pressed on it, it like split. Don't recommend this, by the way. Anyone listening that doesn't know, <laughs> it's toxic, right? <laughs> but the thing is, mercury is so dense that it's not very easily absorbed by your skin because it's so like dense. Uh, okay. What's most dangerous is the mercury vapors when you breathe it in. And you know what I did afterward? I couldn't. Sweep. You drank it. No, 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 no. no okay. that'd, be, that'd be wild. So I don't know if I'd be alive. I swept the mercury underneath my bed. So, so those mercury vapors were floating around my room for sure. It was Bro, your dreams my must have been cool. wild. Just imagine what I could accomplish in life if I was like 
you know, 20 IQ higher than I lost from the Mercury. Yeah, this one's a kid. It's not, not, don't recommend. I mean, they don't make those thermometers anymore, but it was an old school yeah. thermometer with Mercury in it. it was, uh, yeah. But I could probably sleep more to to be more functional. <laughs> I can't really blame the Mercury on that one. That's just yeah. the heat, heat, heat end. But yeah, it's, it's actually of, wild how little like most people sleep. Just that's not good. It, I've looked at the side track I mean, of lack of sleep is not a good. It's yeah. not good. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna commit to. By next week, I'm gonna hit you up and be like, Anacor. I'm running on a hundred. There's actually a funny meme I saw on uh, Instagram. Instagram reel. It was uh, I don't know if you've seen Dragon Ball Z, the Cell yeah, Saga. Yeah. It was like when Cell was in its final form, he's like like airboxing stuff, right? He's yeah. like the most used. <laughs> and like the caption is me when I finally get eight hours of sleep. <laughs> you know what the thing is though, yeah. That's genuinely how I feel when I'm fully rested. Yeah. Yeah. I'm literally like I'm I'm like Cell. Yeah. I'm like, I know what move you're gonna throw. You don't even need a calculator on those days. Bro, next game. Yeah, you know I'm saying? Bro, I could do that stuff in my head. <laughs> I guarantee I was laughing at the calculator thing even more than I would have if I was... Like, I wouldn't have laughed that hard if I actually slept enough. <laughs> I, was, I was so sleep deprived. I can't even process how funny it was. I just kept laughing. Uh, all right. Anyway, we got some events to cover, too. So let's uh, let's yeah. get on to that. But um so real quick too because we were approaching that two-hour mark uh we have a routes event this adventure awaits during the out to play events it's called out to play i guess um from the 27th uh so starting tomorrow i guess um we're recording this on tuesday so starting wednesday maybe when you hear this until the following monday october 2nd uh, it's like I would just encourage you to play more routes i guess um there's a bunch of spawns nothing really pp relevant besides the onyx um and then there's yeah, some yeah true I, I still need enough for like a shadow Celix for ultra league i built a non-shadow one i might want to build one for master league too who knows i mean i have the yeah, hunter, so yeah, maybe true, help true. my teammate with a scrim one day um his soon growlis is going to be in the seven uh in two and seven kilometer eggs and that's kind of dead because it's like shiny debut Oh, okay, that's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. it's like, the, you know what I mean? When it's in the eggs, it's like, you kind of yeah. want the PvP ID. They're also in field research tasks, too. No PvP ID, oh, obviously, for that. Um, and time research. But also in time research, uh, field research is Hisuian Sneasel, Hisuian Quillfish, Palmy. Like, again, these have all been wild spawns, so it's, like, not as yeah. exciting. Um, so Pay time research. Nothing crazy with it. $2. Not one dollar, not nine nine cents. Two dollar research. <laughs> Wait, um, two dollars is mad. Yeah, there's a oh, yeah, because they flipping up the. Oh, didn't the they up price. the coins? Yeah, they yeah. did. Some places, not my place yet, but yeah, they did. I, I'm not sure about my. I think in UK they yeah. definitely did. Uh, event box. There will be a Voyager box available during this event for nineteen ninety Poke coins, featuring ten super incubators, twelve incubators, and two poffins. That does not seem like a great deal, but if you love hatching, maybe. Mm. I don't know, and then there's showcases, and then there's a routes update. So, increased route availability across the globe. All right, we'll see what that happens. Lower level requirement for <laughs> trains to create routes. Okay, if you're into create routes. Several quality of life improvements, including seeing more routes listed in nearby menu, directional arrows on routes, and a running count of Zygar cells you've collected in the Zygar cube details. And I like that last one. I think it's good. Okay, do you know what? I actually have some genuine like feedback on roots yeah because i enjoy them yeah? yeah i think they're cool but bruv the the menu is just so dead yeah because you go on it yeah and you're like okay well let me see if there's any around me yeah? you click on one and it's like it doesn't show you where it is you yeah. can't move around the map, map or anything yeah. like that it's hard to pick so the one got no idea. well also huh? they don't they, they don't even show they don't even pull up the top of the list it's not always the one that's closest yeah. to you it's yeah. like a bunch of us. yeah. Bro, it's so dead. And then sometimes it freezes and you can't even like put the thing back down or, or up again. Um, yeah, there's that. And that. then the other thing is when I've done the routes, there's been times where I can't complete the route. I've like walked through the whole thing and I'm like nothing. And I pause and I try to resume and like, you got to walk over to your pause. My pause is in the middle of the route. I'm like, how is it pause there, right? And like, I, I this happened this past weekend. I couldn't complete the route. And so I do another route just to get my Zygar cell. And, and the, oh, also, so the thing is, like, the Zygar cells aren't guaranteed for routes. They just guarantee one Zygar cell per day, right? For your How first route. That? Before your first route, right? Like, people aren't yeah. going to go multiple routes just for this right Zygar cell. I mean, some people will, but it's just like, 
it's already hard enough to get people to do it. Just guarantee the one from your first route, right? Um, but yeah. Oh, they also said trainers will be able to find Zagar cells more often exploring routes. Oh, is it in the future? Okay, yeah. Hopefully, because the first one's not going to have that full Zy- Zygarde is full form Zygarde <laughs> is going to busted, right? I'm just yeah. saying. I mean, it's going to be some spoof. It's going to be something sketch. Like, yeah, hundred percent. It's gonna be something. I mean, there's some legit trainers. Like I saw, like Norm, he has a hundred Zygar cells already. That's yeah, pretty good. I mean, you need two hundred for the full form, but you still need you need a hundred, and also like, you can't trade them right now. So yeah. like, what do you still do? And you need the XL as well. This is the thing, isn't it? Like if you're yeah, using, XLs, yeah. dude, Zygarde that's the ultra guy. It's like Gimme Ghoul. Like you need the XLs yeah. and you need the coins, right? You don't. You can't. Well, Gimme is not that bad because no, can, it's, like, it's easier to do, but it's just like another yeah. layer of like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's not just you need the XLs and dust anymore. You need the yeah. coins too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, we'll see. I'll probably do some routes and see. I mean, the thing is, like, even if you don't enjoy it, you're gonna want to have the Zygarde cells for when when you can make that Zygarde. Man, that thing's bulkier than a Lickitung in Great League. It does. Crazy. It's gonna be good. I can't believe it's really the three leagues. Just... Yeah, that's wild, and it's good in all three, right? Yeah. You could argue that. Well, I actually, Dragon Knight these days is pretty good in all three leagues, but like you know, Swamper not as good in Master League, right? Um, mm-hmm. I guess like Swamper, Snorlax, Dragon Knight probably the three that are most relevant in all three leagues, but you know, it's just like this thing's like. How do you think I it would do in the current meta? It'd be pretty decent. Well, like the current Which show one? six meta. Zygarde. Mm. Uh, yeah. You well, you you take neutral from surf, I guess, from lantern. You're taking double from ice, so that's like the biggest downside, right? But double from ice. You have earthquake to. But I mean, so so does Gligar, right? Gligar yeah, takes from yeah, ice yeah. and it's still relevant, yeah. right? Uh, you M- might just be like a Reg seal. I, it has earthquake though. Yeah. So that's got nerfed. So it's probably yeah, for the best. True, true. Um. I don't know if it beats Medicham or not. Oh, yeah, I mean, Medicham is running Ice Punch. It probably doesn't beat Medicham. Yeah. Yeah. But it would probably make Medicham even more of a staple fighter. Because why run? Why would you ever run Deoxys Defense on a Zygarde match? Yeah. Yeah, Cycle Boost? yeah. There's everyone's yeah. going to run Medicham. Uh, it could be okay. I think it's actually it's actually probably harder. To, it's going to be like, probably going to be like a carping. Like, it's probably harder to use in practice. Mm. But I think it has a little bit more flexibility. Being able to wall off the waters is pretty nice. It doesn't really wall off the waters, the thing, though. No, because you're taking neutral. Yeah. You wall off electrics, but like, there's not that many electric, like pure electrics. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. I'm curious. I mean, you take neutral from like everything. Like It feels you... almost like, okay, is the move set basically the same as Steelix, but Steelix has... Breaking swipe? Breaking yeah, good thing this thing does not have breaking swipe because that would be yeah, awesome. Yeah. Wait, let me yeah, just see what Zygar has at the moment. I mean, no one has one yet, right? So, yeah, um, we definitely talked about this a while ago, but uh, mm-hmm. I don't remember. All right, so Dragon Tail and Bite and Zed Headbutt, obviously, run Dragon Tail. Bulldoze, Crunch, Earthquake, Hyper Beam, Outrage. Yeah, yeah the, the charges are not amazing. Crunch, crunch is like non stab. Uh, the Dragon Moves Outrage, which you probably just would never run. You probably just run Dragon Tail, Crunch, Bulldoze, or Earthquake. I don't know. Why did Earthquake's... you say bulldoze? I don't know. It's less <laughs> energy. I mean, earthquake's pretty bad these days. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me let me it's let me check the, how different the efficiency is. Bulldoze one point three three. Yeah, earthquake one point six nine. Yeah. I mean, it's it's five less energy, but you 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 run no earthquake. Yeah. Really. Yeah, bulldoze is. Um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so go check out the routes if you can. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some bonuses through three times XP for complete routes. Dude, that's a lot of grind for that. Earn buddy candy faster while exploring routes with your buddy. That one actually might be kind of interesting. Awesome. Yeah, you could maybe. But what happens when you get off it? Like, what if you're doing legend? You better find another route ASAP. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> and then here's a big one for people that are still looking for this. Kecleon will be appearing more frequently at Pokestops. Mm. I finished that part of the special research, but I know some people are still looking for their 10 Kecleon. So, yeah, that's going to be a big one. Um. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, there's another kind of a throwaway event, I guess. Uh, it's gonna be the uh Azrael Hatch Day. It's on the thirtieth, so this upcoming weekend, Saturday, two p.m. to five p.m. The Azrael, so the so the pre-evolution of Meryl and Azumarill, uh, increased chance of hatching a shiny Azrael, and then. Um, two times candy for hatching, two times stardust from hatching eggs, two kilometer eggs will drop more frequently. This is good if you're looking for a, a zoom reel still for a great yeah. league, but that's about it. I think for 
most of the heavy PPers, they don't really, they already have it. But I, I gotta say, Azuma might be pretty meta in the in the yeah. upcoming regionals because mm-hmm. it's uh well, less Regi Seal. Well, you're not great into Sand Slash, but I mean better into Power Stone variant. But less um less Regi Seal and a lot more Umbreon, and you're good into Gligar. So I could see uh, Azuma picking up in usage. Obviously, yeah. I mean you're obviously not good into the Grass types, but I guess. At least having that ice beam. But yeah, again, but I mean, Lantern's not great into it either, right? So, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. You do lose a Lantern head to head matchup, yeah. though. But, um, yeah, and I mean, Pelper around. I mean, it's good into all the flyers. I feel like Pelper, mm-hmm. Dragonite, Charizard, and Gligar. So, it's yeah, honestly yeah. the best anti flyer at the moment. It's better than Registeel is into those combined. True. So, um, so we do have that. Uh, so again, uh, oh, whoops, this is I put Grubbin, but this is actually Conkledor or oh, yeah, uh, whatever. Cool. But um, so we have a community day coming up as well. This actually happens to be during Sacramento, so I will be playing it at the venue, I guess. But Sunday from two p.m. to five p.m. So probably like when the tournament's wrapping up. It's Timber Community Day, October. Shiny Timber. Well, it's already been out, right? But yeah. um, not the debut. But Conkodor will be able to learn Brutal Swing, which I think is a pretty solid move. I guess it's like a slightly more baity move. Uh, it's less than. Is it like a? Is it a surf turn? Brutal Swing. Of stats. Yeah. I don't think so. Is it that good? I don't think it's that good. Yeah. Brutal Swing is one point six to forty energy. Surf is no. Oh, it is. It is a surf clone. Yeah. It doesn't feel that good though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it feels pretty bad. I think just water feels better. Yeah, but um, it's ten less energy than Dynamic Punch, so that's going to be pretty nice. So you could potentially run it with Stone Edge. I don't think you really need Dynamic Punch, especially in Master League, which is probably where you'll use it. I don't think it's really mm-hmm. going to have that much play anywhere else. Um, there's just better fighters no. in the other metas, yeah. like Ultra League and Great League, especially like, Ultra League too. Like Versia and just Cobalt are just too good to run any other fighters, in my opinion. It um, seems like a nice addition to like Show Six Master League, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, which you probably don't play a ton of, but like at least in Premiere, it could be good. Yeah, um, but the bonuses are pretty nice too. Three times dust for catching, uh, you know, two times candy and XLs and blah blah blah, all that stuff, modules, all that stuff. Um, and then one additional special trade and fifty less Stardust for trade. So the three times dust is gonna be nice. Mm-hmm. I don't think you want to do a Stardust bet for this one, do you? Nah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, man. <laughs> Um, that, like, that one's like if it wasn't already skewed yeah you being at sacramento that weekend i can't, hey, I can't man maybe i top cut i'm just too busy uh, battling you know it's possible it's possible uh for some reason like, i'm not feeling great about it <laughs> but yeah somehow you're catching pokemon even while you're like <laughs> so I, I don't really trust that also what's kind of cool is it says like one additional special trade right yeah. So then you'll have like four. I think because right? it might stack onto the. Regional. Yeah, because I get what three at the regional and I have additional one. Yeah. yeah uh, at this cool. point, I've gone to so many regionals. I've like cleared most of my lucky trades for people. I don't have that many lucky trades. Nah, you need to get these buzzwalls, bro. To... You need to get these level fifteen. So, so that's that's a tough part. At these events, it's hard because people know how hard those are, right? Yeah. At GoFest, a bunch of scrubs that don't or not I shouldn't say scrubs, which is non PV people. <laughs> Maybe I could say scrubs because they don't want to listen to podcasts, <laughs> yeah, but, but you know what I mean. Like non PV people yeah, yeah. don't care about it, right? As much. Yeah. So you could get Maybe it. you need to like prime up the TCG players. Maybe, but like I don't know how just, easy that just requires me to talk to a bunch of random people. I don't know because who knows yeah, if they play true, how true. who knows how casually or not casually they play the game, right? Some of them might not even That's have true. the buzz from the quest. Yeah. Um, but I will probably probably try to do some low level trades for I don't even know what I, I still need a buzz for Ultra League, so I'll take that because I don't mm-hmm. have a great Ultra League buzz either. Um, but yeah, also Guzzlord might be. I don't know if it's coming out before. I have a decent Guzzlord I got from Mali for Great League. I still need a good one for Ultra League, so that's another one I need to look for. Mm. Yeah, I'm like Cobalion and Verizia are pretty much set, so I'll say those are good. Anyway, that's it for the events. Uh, we are approaching that two hour mark, so let's do some ELO check. What you at? What's this ELO hat? It's not looking good, bro. It's not looking what? good. <laughs> I haven't right, let's... Too much since last week. I will say that. Yeah, I'm at 2704. I'm at 2400. <laughs> it is peak. <laughs> the reality is setting in, huh? Right, let me let, 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 let me set some content. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm ready um, to hear all the excuses. <laughs> I've had a decent amount of work, yeah? Yeah. Plus, plus, 
Um, obviously, I know I have to go and join this Trevenant stream on Thursday. No, yeah, you so. do. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Next, yeah. Tune uh, in. Yeah. If you listen to this day, live, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's happening this Thursday at 11 a.m. <laughs> GMT minus 7 Pacific time. And Cole will be going to be on my stream. I'll be here. I'll be I'll running be Trevin all sets. So I, I honestly, I think it isn't even that bad. I'm not going to lie. I mean, yeah, the 2400 is decent. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah, decent. I don't know. I, mean, I feel like lower ELO, it's not even that. That's not even that low. But like, but like when you're not at the leaderboard ELO, the teams are way, way less Bruv, predictable. I like, don't understand that. Yeah, because obviously I knew you were going to do an ELO check today. Yeah. So I was just like, oh shit, maybe I should like, you know, play some today. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bro, I thought I was getting trolled. Well, I was like, I was like, two Steelix leads in a row. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was like, uh, what else do I face against? Um, what were you running? I, I kept on switching it up because I was just like, oh no, you I'll, don't I'll, switch. You gotta stick on the yeah, same team. Know, know, That's know, a strat. Know, you don't yeah, switch yeah. it up. You're gonna start believing um, the algorithm soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> honestly, I can see why people do. You know, oh, 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 yeah. Bro, you the, the teams down there are wild. Bro. <laughs> okay, wild. so wait, what team? What yeah. was what was what was wrong with the Celix lead? What's wrong with Celix for your team? Now I was just like, where am I? Like, okay, I don't know if maybe the meta shifted. Yeah. But I'm just like, what are the chances of me facing two Steelix leads in a row? And I was like, oh, maybe it's the same team. And it wasn't the same team. Like, no, two That's of the ones were actually the same. I faced two that, of the That was weird to me. Leads. Alola Ninetales. Uh, I, I saw a lot of Alola Ninetales yeah. switchings. Um, I saw Wigglytuff today. Oh, that man. was weird. But disarming but again, board, I was just disarming like... Disarming voice actually makes it super annoying because it gets the moves way faster. Yeah, man uh yeah it was strange it was strange you know? but yeah realistically i just need to like stick with a consistent team or something like that. But... yeah don't watch well, don't watch gonna, i haven't this is you're gonna this have, is to have something on thursday bro, you have, you have something no in mind this, oh what in terms of a team yeah yeah probably something like because i was actually using this unironically um a few days ago right yeah? i was actually going quite well but i was like in great league i was like making like a couple mistakes that made like four one sets into three twos and then okay. it sounded like that. But it was um Trevenant, uh A slash and I or Shadow A slash. And I think I had Diggersby. Huh. I think I just wanted to use the Diggersby. But the only issue with, with that is that what like do you um, say? Oh you say something on Diggersby? Yeah. Yeah. The it. only issue with that though is that like uh when you face a shadow A slash lead. And then like it's it's not uh, impossible. You kind of have yeah. to just like switch in the diggers be anyway. Yeah. Try and take some shields and then like yeah, try and close out with a slash. Yeah, but are you uh, running Powder Snow or Shadow Ball? Uh, Powder Snow. Uh, and because you need something for Lickitung too, right? Because Lickitung is super. Annoying. Yeah. Wait, yeah. what about I mean, Umbreon? What, what even beats Umbreon on that team? <laughs> Bro, I I didn't see an Umbreon, but I'm pretty sure Diggers be. Like... Let's bring in the Umbreon. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but Umbreon Elite, you swap in Diggers be. There goes your Umbreon check, right? No, no, but then you can like close out with like. What do you do with the Obstagoon? I saw Obstagoon today. I don't. I don't see Obstagoon. They say swap the Obstagoon. <laughs> yeah. though, and I counter swap. I, no, actually, you know, I did face one Obstagoon today, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I, they, I um, don't expect Obstagoon basically. I think they ran. This team was wild. They ran like a Regiseal lead with an Obstagoon say swap. I was running a Shadow Charizard lead, so they had a bad spot for the Obstagoon anyway. I had a Medicham with Dynamic Punch in the back. <laughs> the moment he saw the med jam, he just left. I like called the night slash on the med jam, but he just left. Yeah, because what are you gonna do? You get countered down just to get hit by dynamic punch. They didn't know how dynamic punch, but like it was just like yeah. it was just over. I left with like five wing attacks too on my Charizard, so like they had energy to deal with. <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah, yeah, it's kind of deep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I look forward to your sets. I gotta anyway. say, how how you yeah. feeling about this legend bet? Because I feel like, Rob, do you know what the thing I mean, is? I'm yeah. trying to hit it before go battle day. You know. I'm trying to hit it in a few. Yeah, I will be honest. I'm I'm betting on one of two things, yeah. Okay. Either a successful Sunshine Cup, yeah. <laughs> which I haven't looked at the meta. Yeah. Uh, you better I hope I don't hit it before it. then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, wait, when's Sunshine Cup? Is it on next week? Yeah, it's Friday, yeah. I mean it's only Tuesday yeah, for me. Yeah. I did do my all sets. Yeah, I won't I won't hit um, it in three days, there's no way. Yeah. Um successful Shun Sunshine Cup or worst case, uh go about it. Worst case, worst case. Go bow, David. But you know what the thing is, yeah, bro. I, I, I told you, yeah. God sending his uh, biggest tests to his strongest soldier. 
<laughs> yeah. Right. Apparently, he's sending it to his weakest soldier, too. <laughs> 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 Everyone gets tested these days. <laughs> Hey, he knows uh, I'm the strongest soldier, yeah. Like, I'm a, I'm a pull it out, don't watch, yeah. Yeah. Regardless of how low the elo is right now, yeah. not the strongest That's soldier in math these days. I will say that. <laughs> oh, I, what a great time! Well, I look forward to that. You know, I, I hope that you have a good grocery store near you that has habanero peppers being sold, so that we can, we can just <laughs> eat and just do it. You know. Yeah, well, we'll we'll think of something fun. Maybe I'll think of like maybe I'll do like um, I'll I'll do like a Q and A with you, right? So like while you eat, like after you eat the habaneros, the three minutes you can't have food or like water. Let's, let's I'm asking you questions ourselves. about your life, right? Let's, let's not like, get ahead of ourselves, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, right. I'm just saying, if you, we if we had betting odds on this you. on this <laughs> legend bet, yeah, you got to you got to have some in your favor, right? income yeah. to yeah. bet on yeah. Anacorsa, yeah. even when the odds are you know yeah. stacked. And, bro, uh, bro, people play the lottery daily, yeah? Yeah. Why, why? And some people win it. Do you know what I mean? Isn't yeah, it? and most people lose it. <laughs> yeah. But we ain't talking about those people, yeah? yeah. We're yeah, talking yeah. about the ones that You win. sound like someone that signed up for the lottery when you, you joined this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do these bets. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll keep this one at two hours for the episode. Uh, we have a team. Mm topic we're just going to talk about the wayfarers nonsense or drama or whatever but we could talk about it for next week i'm sure like yeah. there's i saw someone else get banned when i was scrolling through twitter just now just uh, what's his name? uh snorik whoever oh really yeah oh, nice. i saw on my twitter um what what's this peak? do you know, know what's actually peak about that yeah is he yeah he got he said Polish. hi i just one one hour ago Hi, I just did get banned. I don't know how and for what. All photos I have ever sent in the Wayfair system were Pokestop photos. I hope I get unbanned before Regionals and Lil. Yeah, he's going Uh, to Lil. Yeah, could you say which photos were inappropriate? Oh, 30-day suspension too. Oh, and it was for Wayfair. It was for Wastebots. It wasn't for like spoofing or anything. Like, you know, it wasn't like, like, you know, something else. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, do you know what the mad thing is? Yeah, is that like, you know, you're saying like that's the the topic of discussion, yeah, bro. I don't think I could discuss it even if I wanted to. Do you know what I mean? Isn't it? Yeah, like I have no idea what their policies are. I have no idea, like you know, what these men do on this other site, in it, yeah. you know, on on Ingress and stuff like that. It's just so confusing. And I feel like that's the biggest yeah. problem as well. Yeah, I mean, we could we could probably, we potentially could um. Put- uh, talk about it next week if it's still an issue yeah. as well. Um, but what do you call it? I think um, I get. I was reading through a thread by one of the people that are very heavily invested in Wayfair, like one of the ambassadors, and they were saying that they were banning these Wayfair accounts that were like from submitting Wayfair spots because they're just you know like oh here's here's my home stop it's like a pikachu mirror it's like a picture of like a pikachu mirror that they uploaded right like not actually there whatever so so they're banning those things but then they just make new accounts and submit it anyway like it wasn't deterring the fake submissions but when they start suspending actually your pokemon go accounts it really curbed a lot of the fake submissions or this is what they said right i don't know i don't work in wayfair until like that which I think if that's the case, like I get that logic and I do think that is an effective way to curb the fake submissions. But I think if you're going to go the route of suspending accounts or banning accounts or whatever for these kind of things, the threshold for proof of it being like malicious intent has to be mm-hmm. super high, right? Yeah. For it to be because if you have like um a false positive, right? Someone that didn't mm-hmm. actually submit something like erroneously right and and they get banned for it that's just such a bad feeling and yeah. you know i i didn't i didn't read through all the threats on it so i might not be as informed on it but yeah they have a bunch of ambassadors that are volunteers essentially that help out with the program but the bans themselves i think come from niantic either way yeah. hopefully if anyone is has been banned from it uh, i wish you all the best um, i don't know if any of our listeners have been we haven't seen any comments on it at least from our listeners. i think the only one i've seen that's been lifted was uh nyan keke 
the Japanese okay. player. Yeah. So and why, he got banned for Wayfarer and actually got there's, lifted. There's an appeal for it, actually. There's a link to appeal if you, yeah. you think you've been uh, banned erroneously. And I haven't tweeted this out yet, but I will tweet it by the time you see this podcast. Uh, but I'll tweet it out. So feel free to check out my Twitter if you don't see it um, anywhere else. But they have a they have a reason on why you might be banned at the bottom. You say appeal decision if there's uh, if you think you've been banned for a bad reason. Yeah, I don't know. I I mean, you know, it's just like it's a tough spot. We the problem is we don't really have info, right? Cuz like yeah. if like for those that are banned, they obviously know what they did, right? And Niantic does, but no one else really knows, right? And I'm not saying like they're lying cuz I think some people were erroneously banned, but there definitely are people that probably were banned for legitimate reasons. <laughs> like they're just trolling and on their actual you know submissions but you'll never know right because it's just it's like it's like people that complain that they didn't spoof but they probably spoofed right yeah. you know so i think also making it like a bit clearer um you know i i don't know maybe there is a little disclaimer saying yo don't upload you know your garden homes because otherwise we'll ban you in it yeah. but if you're not saying that in the first place yeah then of course you're going to get people like doing some dumb stuff, yeah. But I feel like yeah. if you say that in the first place, then there's. I can't a bit remember of... if it says it or not. I mean, I'll check. I have no idea. Yeah, I submitted. I submitted a couple, but uh, one, yeah, one of mine got approved finally, so I did get one. It is, it is a nice home stop, but it's a legit, it's a legit submission, right? It was actually yeah. something that um is legit, and then one other one's still pending approval. And I had like three or four denies in the past ones in Atlanta, but it was it was the community pool, and I didn't realize community pools were not allowed to be submitted. I didn't realize that until I talked to someone that what just involved. a swimming pool. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know if it's like they're allowed now or not, but I I know I, I partially I don't know if they weren't allowed because they stopped swimming pools in general for being allowed in the future because obviously there's some pools that are pokey stops I think, and then. Or I also don't know if they were stopping it for the time being because it was active during COVID. It was like during COVID times and they don't want people going to a community. You're not supposed to go in a community pool yeah. during COVID anyway, right? Like they're all closed. So they didn't want that to be a thing. But um, anyway, yeah, I just tried to submit the same thing literally three times. I just reworded every time and like it kept getting denied. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, if I did that these days, man, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's seven I mean? days at least. <laughs> 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 anyway i'm just i'm just kidding i don't know if it is or not but um anyway that'll do it for us we'll talk more about the wayfair thing next week for the tea stuff if if it ends up being an issue still which it might be um but and you have any last words uh no nah, man no nah. yeah. there's no uh no regionals this weekend nice but unfortunately yeah my my one request for people is that if you're listening to this and it's before 11 a.m. Pacific Thursday slash GMT minus seven, and you have a chance to queue up from 11 to <laughs> 11 to 1 p.m. for those two-hour time slots, and you're in that 2400 range. Yo, do me a solid. And Not bring, tell me these one person. Bring, no, <laughs> yeah, just bring triple Trevin encounters. There's nothing you can do. Run Umbreon the lead. He's got no answers, okay? Umbreon, like, oh, run yeah. Obstacoon, actually. Run Obstacoon the lead. You're done for. You're cooked, no, right? I'll, I'll just lose you don't even get outpaced, too. You don't even get to the C bomb at the same time yeah, anymore. That's actually unfortunate. Yeah. I don't know what I'll do to an Obstacoon. Obstacoon I, I, but Obstacoon I have a feeling before. I need to choose a different... I need to choose a different... Uh, like, maybe something else that's not Diggers B. Look, if you want a free win, just run triple Trevin encounters. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, no matter what he runs, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Anyway. Uh, we'll catch you all next time, uh, but have a good one. And yeah, let's see if, uh, let's see if Anacorp's math gets better next week. <laughs> 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 uh, so-